Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I am looking for a red team. If we do this job for him, people are going to find out. If we are arrested, then we have the ability to come back. He has nominated me as his proxy to reopen the negotiation. Is this the part where you ask for money from me? Every time that a whisper of Yarpaya would come up at family dinners or anything, they would, they would shush her immediately. To be fair, though. I know. <laughs> I mean, she thinks she gets shushed about other things. I know. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tabletop Notch, also known as Snake in the Grass Simulator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like again today, right, Matt? My one note on the thing to make sure that I say is that we sincerely apologize for uh, blowing uh, the ever-loving fuck out of the microphones. Yeah. We're normally so good at that, and we were listening to it back, and we were like, scream. Unlistenable. I put a but big warning in the podcast. I was like, the podcast warning, warning was very warning. funny. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, but tonight we are coming back with chapter 23 in the uh, post uh, Snake in the Grass glow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was the world before Snake in the yeah. Grass and now there's now everything post, after yeah. it. Um, <laughs> We're poorer now. <laughs> the group has had, yes, the group has had a little discussion uh, with the Monteros about what they saw at the dig site. Oh, and now cool. there's a mystery visitor that's uh, requested a presence. Oh. Uh, in the in the meeting halls that the Monteros provide, but before we get into that, shall we do the usual? Let's yes. <clears throat> Happy daylight savings, happy Oscars, happy Mario Day, Mother's but, Day in the UK. Mario, oh, Mother's oh, Day. Oh yeah, Mother's Day. Day. but none of that matters because you're Isn't your mom British. <laughs> Most. <of them>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, none of that Mother's matters Day, because well. you joined us here tonight on Sunday on Twitch. So thank you for being here with us. Um, other ways to uh, uh, see and hear the show, there's a podcast version that comes out on Tuesdays. There's a YouTube video that goes live on Fridays. Unless you support us in one of the many ways you can do so, like uh, YouTube membership or Patreon. In that case, you'll get the video early on Tuesday, ad-free for a few days. Booyah. If that's how you like to do it. Consume <laughs> yeah. our media. Um, yeah, thank you for commenting and liking and 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 we d Jordan looks at every single comment. I look at most of the comments. <laughs> uh, so thank you for for being here with us. YouTube isn't the only place you can comment. You can comment on any <laughs> social media platform, and in fact, you should comment on uh, the content. <laughs> you should comment on on our personalities, on our appearances. You can comment on whatever you want on oh. social media. <laughs> yeah. Can yeah. <laughs> you can. Good. You can. Yeah. Test the boundaries and join us on any social media platform of your choice. I would like to comment that. <laughs> Sure. You have a comment? Fucking Seaweed Brain Podcast oh. is listed as yes. the number nine in the US in TV and film podcasts right now, currently. Nerds! Nerds! So, Nerds! Shout out Erica's amazing. Hell yeah. Thank you everyone Erica. who became a patron yeah. of my podcast <laughs> from starting here being a tabletop notch person. If you need your Fair. Percy Jackson fix, so that's the place to be. Congrats there. Thank you. Woo -woo. <laughs> um, the other thing that is so cool. <laughs> That's a good what? killer transition. <laughs> comment. I, I clean my dishes with comment and, and dish. Gum. Here's a dish best served cold. Okay, so then you can do the transition for me. Um, we have now have mugs and other really fun merch on our merch store. Check out the merch. Uh, Eric is wearing our awesome merch. Yeah, we got, we got so mugs much all around the table. Yeah. <laughs> my mug right here. Literally, Literally yeah. Mug. Get in there. Uh, it's day. Mother's Day. You forgot to get your mother a present in the UK. <laughs> you can. Get her a muscle mommy. Get them mommy. a muscle mommy. <laughs> mug. Mug. Get Perfect. Anthony's mom a muscle mommy. <laughs> Um, Perfect. Speaking of muscle mommy, uh, meaning Doxley in the uh, okay, this is the real game. transition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, I lost. You tripped him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, in uh, the Discord, discord.gg slash forward slash tabletop notch, there was an awesome thing posted this week uh, in Brunk Hollow fan art of Doxley and Alien. It was. <laughs> So awesome. The if you siblings have Tyrone. Yes, yeah. yeah. you Olive Branch, it's beautiful. It's so Branch. good. Uh, so head in there if you haven't seen that art and many other art pieces that have been drawn. 
They're all wonderful. Discord is a great, lovely place. It's like heaven on earth. It's so, it's so good. Uh, the uh, only thing that I'll just say is that UCB is actually taking away all my 401 certification because I couldn't do the transition. So. <laughs> oh. Yikes. You just got a, you just got a notification. Taking yeah. away, yeah. Of, that's so sad. They, yeah, I know, they're like, it's out. You, you can't, we can't tell people you went there. Oh my God. Speaking of UCB. Yes. You can believe no. that you have stuff on our Patreon. Oh no. Certification. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Hers you. is intact. <laughs> um, this past week or, I don't, 10, what is time? Uh, yes. We just dropped, uh, Char Armed with charms. Armed with Thank charms. You. charms. Yes. The March drop is armed with charms. If you need a little dash of magic, but not too much, if you don't want to give them a whole magic item or a spell, you can give them charms, and the, the guide has suggestions for how to implement them, or just flood your campaign with Chewingas who, uh, <laughs> who imbue you with magic. So that was our Patreon drop. Every month we do a new uh, drop, so check it out. Also speaking of drops, two new animated emotes in the Twitch yeah, chat. Give it up, yes. let's go, have fun. Wow, wow. They're, they're actually, I don't know if I've seen them. What are they? They're really oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Wait, you have it? They're so good. <laughs> One of them is of your likeness. <laughs> this is what Jordan does. <laughs> <laughs> my likeness. I never tell him when I'm making the most of them. So they're, they're awesome. Oh, they're if good. you recall, <laughs> um, when TC took a sniff of the, uh, the handkerchief mm. and the NPC gave a... <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, it's very good. I, th I thought it was going to be the reaction to Morna sinking the the, the, the shot. Oh, that was that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're trying to refrain from those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the emotes are in trouble. Why? <laughs> Why? 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 There's no reason. Uh, oh, but okay. I think, I think we I think we nailed it. I think we nailed it. Oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not done yet. Oh wait, no, hold on. No, you, oh, I said to read all this stuff. Oh, God. Not just soda you next week. Oh, okay. Yes. You need time. Yes. You need time. We'll talk yeah. about okay. it at the end. Oh yeah, not just soda next week. So yes. uh, figure out how to get that access. Um, Mutant drum six resubscribe. <laughs> figure it out for your phone. Oh. Platinum resubscribe. Quail drama resubscribe. Toast Vag Vakira resubscribed. Enrique CTV resubscribe. Nine one one LS resubscribe. Golden Dagger did a thousand fifty bits. Thank Ooh. you. Mally Slayer one hundred bits. Bird M resubscribe. Wizard and gave out five community subs. Thank you, thank you. I am Haley resubscribed. Half Bake resubscribed. Vast Lunacy gave out 20 community subs. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Pogodoko resubscribed. Atria resubscribed. Helljack 559 bits. I see what you're doing. Came on Clive 10 stream streak. Master Dark uh, 100 bits. Burnsy resubscribed. Jay Brownie 1000 bits. Master Dark 10 stream streak. Uh, Shades of Blue resubscribed. Shades of Blue 54 months. What's up, my man? Wow. Thank you. Helljack 7 stream streak. Ooh. And then oh Helljack 235 bits. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. So, Ooh. so Ooh. Ooh. Cheers. Thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, oh. Or, or, or. <laughs> all right, fine. I guess whoever's in this room won't kill you. Uh, because of all yeah. those generous. Oh. See what you've done. Generous generosity. I mean, at this point, the Samson brothers are just going to be showering us with. Oh, oh yeah, we have special to look. things. Oh my God, it's right, Dustin start. Samson yeah. finally speaking. We'll hear what his voice sounds like. <laughs> oh my God, he's like my brother's keeping me in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get me out of here. <laughs> That'd be a fun quest. All right, I think that if we, if we keep talking, he'll just have to keep hiding under the table. So. He's doing good, don't worry about it. All right, I think it's time to throw it over to the recap and then the intro, and then we will dive back into chapter 23 of Brunkhaller. Yes. So, without further ado, here we go. Oh. Oh. Previously, on chapter 22, Bouncing Around. The group was determined to make the most of their time before meeting back at the Lucky Heathen, especially Mona and Doxley, who set the wheels in motion for their future plans. Dashing between Chelsea Gujek and Autry Cobb, Doxley orchestrated a way for Izzy Narvos to get what she wanted by bringing additional orcs to town, and Mona gave Clark Bark what Ilian would not, the promise of weapons in exchange for more details regarding Haskell's incarceration. Kate located her mom but still struggled to connect, and after some Riverside studying, it was time to report to the casino floor. The Monteros unveiled their newest attraction, a game of precision called Snake in the Grass, but after a hot start, their luck ran cold, so they headed upstairs for a more serious discussion about what they'd seen at Bison's dig site. Chelsea and Liam were pleased with the party's openness, but they needed time to think, and an unknown visitor had requested an audience down the hall. Will Doxley's master plan come together when she finally sits down with Izzy? And would Ilian put Yarpaya on hold for another chance to trap the snake? Stick around and find out in Chapter 23 of Brunkhollow.
before nah. we dive oh! in. I mean, we know. We all like that. <laughs> to the campaign itself. Everyone knows what's coming. It's me. <laughs> the achievement. <laughs> the achievement's called Over Easy Peasy, and it's land on an egg with the very first throw in the wow. inaugural game of Snake in the Grass. Woo! Thank you so much. It's, now, is that a social or a? It is. Okay. Yeah. It's the honor of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the high point so far. Thank you, thank you. Do you have any people to thank? Um, nice. I want to thank my agent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank the Monteros the for Monteros. giving me this opportunity. Exactly. Where's Steven to play around? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'd like to thank Head and West. It was playing. Oh my God, it's <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Doxley isn't here to confirm it. But the room that you enter into is much like the one where she consulted with Nile. Central wooden meeting table. Simple but elegant hanging chandelier. Solid brick walls to dampen the cheers of excitement from the main floor down below. The Monteros have spoken of the bathhouse that they owned in Vancor, and it seems the desire to provide a discreet place for discourse and deliberation has followed them here. There's plenty of seating, maybe a dozen chairs in total, but only one is currently occupied. Someone of average build and height, a middle-aged human man, you'd guess. Though he's draped in a very plain brown cloak with the hood pulled up and over his forehead, Come on. so it's hard to make out some of the distinguishing features. A little bit of groomed stubble is scattered across a broad chin that peeks out from beneath the fabric. And he has a small little bottle of whiskey next to a half-empty glass. It looks like he's been sipping from it. Getting ready. He takes a small sip. And then he pushes his hood back. And it's not a person you recognize. But for TC, there is a tinge of familiarity. Subtle features that go beyond his nearly bald hairline and the sun-stained leathery skin. As he gestures for you to join him at the table, it looks like he might have a couple of bracelets, but they're tucked beneath the sleeves to make them hard to sort of pick out what they might be, like shapes or colors or any kind. He motions to the chair, so he's at the end of the table, kind of motions to his left, motions to his right. Please, have a seat. I have all these chairs and no one to sit in them. Hmm? Sure, I'll make my way over and sit in one of them. I'm sorry, you said I don't recognize him? You, he, there's like something in your brain that's like, there's some familiarity, but you can't place it. You do not, you, you're confident you have not met this person before, but something about his features seem familiar. Mm. <clears throat> Hmm. Nice to be out of the elements, even for just a brief reprieve. Now, uh, depending on who I'm speaking with, one might call me Corliss, or Mr. Oregander, but for most people that I talk to throughout the day, they just call me Wart. How are you liking Brunk Hollow so far? Seems okay, hmm? Everything I wanted and more. <laughs> I don't know what you've heard. I don't know what information makes it to this side of the pass or that side of the pass. Yesterday there was an incident. Hmm? A few of my men were killed, a prisoner escaped. Not good for anyone. I won't pretend to uh, know your situation. For some, there's no love lost between themselves and the law, themselves and the gods. I understand. I think I surprised Mr. and Mrs. Montero, even, <laughs> by coming to them to arrange a room. 
I wanted to meet on uh, comfortable grounds for you. I am alone. There are emotions around me. No tricks. I do this because what I'm going to propose is uh, risky. Perhaps even out of character for a man like me. May I, is he, does he really feel like this is careless? Is that something that I can glean from him? Uh, make, what are you trying to glean? Sorry. <laughs> if this is something that really is out of character for him, or like uh, this sure. is something that he's yeah. fluffled about. <laughs> um, 14? 14. Oh, sorry, 18. <laughs> yeah. um, he does seem very forthright. He seems like, even though he's, you know, he's comfortable, he's putting on a little bit of introductory bravado, he does seem a little sort of uncomfortable in the space. Like, this is a man who most of the spaces that he operates in are his office, his, you know, wherever he chooses to go. So this is a foreign space to him. Also, for a man of his stature to not have guards around him, even when he was kind of motioning around, you could see him just kind of checking all the spaces. He seems a little uncomfortable in the space. So it, it does seem out of sorts for him. <laughs> I am looking for a red team. Does anyone know what that is? No, sir. No? Okay. As time has gone on, and both Broncolo and the prison have continued to grow, we've had some lapses in security. Because Fort Contrition is located where it is, beyond the cusp, as some people say. Piran is sometimes reluctant to send their best lawmen, as if they would be somehow corrupted, tainted, just by setting foot here. Hmm? More and more, we've had guards accepting bribes, doing favors for inmates, generally neglecting their sworn duties as officers. A red team is a group of outsiders hired to poke at the weaknesses, see where our security bends, and perhaps where it breaks. I can't hire my own people, for obvious reasons. I can't hire people from Broncolo who are too recognizable. Hmm. Defeats the purpose. Now, my preference would be to send for people on the outside. No offense. But there are two problems. One is what I said before. The People's Ministry of Peran is facing a lot of scrutiny right now. A lot of heat about sending good boys and girls into the godless unknown. We'll be lucky if they agree to replace the guards that were killed in the attack yesterday. The other problem is time. It might take the better part of a week to recruit and dispatch a suitable unit from Peran. And this thing with the fugitive, it needs to be resolved. Or, at the very least, making real progress. It is my hope that a red team may, through the course of their investigation, stumble across information that leads to his arrest. The red team would assume various posts in and around Fort Contrition. Guards, personnel, laborers, maybe even prisoners. Goals would differ depending on your assigned post, but all under the umbrella of finding out what's bringing disorder and dishonor to my prison. Now, I would forgive you for thinking so. 
but this is not a joke. Nor it is it easy for me to ask of people that I do not know. But all the way out here, isolated from our brothers and sisters of the church, one has to be adaptive, creative. One of my deputies, a good kid, who survived the attack on the bridge, he said that two strangers showed great bravery, quick thinking during the ambush. I get a description, I ask around, and I learn that these two are part of a small group that arrived just a couple of days ago. So now, I am here, putting the question to you. I don't expect you to do this out of the kindness of your hearts. Reward for the capture of the fugitive was set at 500. You do this and you provide any information about guards taking bribes, prisoners receiving preferential treatment, goods being smuggled in, or God's be generous leads on where the fugitive may have gone. I'm prepared to uphold that amount for each of you. 500 each. That is quite a sum, sir. It is also quite a breadth of goals. Not all of them have to be accomplished. I'm hoping that by casting a wide net, we catch one or two. Hmm? Show Peran that we're making progress. You want us to play prisoner to try and infiltrate, to try and break through, to try and weasel out the unloyal. Any one of these things could get us killed. Not in my prison. Unlikely. The people who work at your prison, they don't necessarily stay out of town. What if they recognize us? I, if you are interested, would have you make a list of any guards that you may have come into contact with. That way we can make sure that your posts don't overlap, as you say. While the gold is quite a large sum, would there be a chance of cashing in for favors instead with the prison with you? I would be willing to provide a signed writ that would grant you use of contrition-run bridges and throughways. But I have to be careful about the kind of favors I provide. As a representative of Piran and the Ministry. Sure. Morna's trying not to seem too eager. <laughs> <laughs> well, TC, how does this sound to you? I think I've voiced my trepidation already in that this could be a very dangerous endeavor, any one. And surrounding yourself with more. When would you need an answer from us, sir? My preference would be for the red team to enter into the system the day after tomorrow. There are some preparations that would need to be made, forms to be drafted up. For obvious reasons, we don't want to wait too long. The red team would be contracted for 48 hours with an optional clause for an additional 24 if needed, if there was some piece of information you felt you were very close to. I was on the bridge. What of this deputy? What of him? If we were to accept, 
Mr. Welker and I would be known to him. I would make sure that he was not posted at the prison during this time, as I would with any other people that you described to me, to make sure that nobody recognizes you. Hmm. As I said, some of you would be posted as guards, new recruits from Piran. Some of you may be working in the infirmary, others prisoners, perhaps. Might I ask what Mr. Rowe was in for? You are worried that we are searching for uh, a man done wrong by justice. Oh no, I'm concerned that if I get involved in this, there are dangerous people who might come after me. <laughs> we would make sure that any information you provide did not get traced back to you. But, if you're interested, people are wondering. This man we are chasing, this fugitive, he is not a good person. Not overly violent, but not a good person. I have my opinions on all my prisoners, but I'll let you decide for yourselves. His <gasps> record of arrest and prosecution. Every crime Good God. he's ever been come put out for. <laughs> Kate's like <laughs> four pages. <laughs> Reading glasses. Go ahead, rattle them out. Quite a long oh my list. God. Go ahead, start. It. All right, trespassing, trespassing, <laughs> intent to distrib distribute contraband, um, uh, misdemeanor vandalism, trespassing, home invasion while intoxicated, harassment of a public official. He's an alcoholic. Coercion of a child to distribute contraband. He's a leader. Uh, criminal <laughs> church negligence, trespassing, impersonation of a ministry votary. He's He's an anarchist. Trial, impropriety, and lewd behavior. Voyeurism. Yeah. I mean, Int I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Intent to distribute contraband. Be. He's a smuggler. Uh, wildlife smuggling, there we go. Adoption fraud, he's a father. Um, <laughs> misdemeanor vandalism, trespassing, incitement of public disturbances, he's a performance artist. Accessory to grave robbing, malicious mischief, harassment of a public official, possession of stolen property, charity misconduct, Charity. Uh, conspiracy to corrupt public morals, oh, failure yes. to disclose material assets in a fraud investigation, public intoxication, aggressive littering, okay, People's Ministry of Peron, littering please, man. distribution of lewd com compositions, and oh. ministry sanctioned public ceremony, witness tampering, intent to distribute contraband, stalking a public official, conspiracy to commit blackmail, possession of stolen records, you know trespassing, that? fabrication of ex- Exculpatory evidence, gross mismanagement of public funds. Was he an opposer to the public of previous official? Um, <laughs> misdemeanor vandalism, deceitful penitence, mishandling of dangerous wildlife, and negligent abandonment, mischievous piracy, destruction of church property, armed burglary of church property, apostasy. Remind me what that is? Uh, it's basically like public denunciation of religion. <laughs> <laughs> Gross trial of conduct, <laughs> attempted yeah, escape from up. lawful custody. This is a real bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> attempted, attempted blackmail of votary during an active trial, attempted bribery of votary during an active trial, and assault of an STA officer. It's STA. Uh, Hate does not know. What do I know what that is? You do know what that is. Are you reading over her shoulder? Yes. That's the Division of Safety and Threat Assessment. They're basically, the Ministry of Peron is the main governing body, but that's the, like the the police force, as it were, the yeah, safety and safety and threat. Ugh. You do also notice as you're kind of reading through them that it's slight because, you know, a rampant murderer would get hunted by the clerics very quickly, but the severity of the crimes does sort of notch up ever so slightly over time. They, you know, they turn from trespassing and vandalism to bribery and coercion to even a little bit of physical assault at the end. So it seems like over time they sort of gradually got a little worse and worse. This man used to work for the People's Ministry? I am afraid I can't tell you anything else. Be honest. Hmm. Do you need an answer right now? I do not. As I said, I wish to put this plan into place the day after tomorrow. You have tonight, and let's say till sunset tomorrow. How would we contact you? You can send a letter through Izzy's office. She brings letters over to Fort Contrition on occasion. 
Very well. Other than our friend in arms on the bridge, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't had a run in with your very own son. Uh. <laughs> and I imagine that comes with accoutrement. I did not know this, but I will make sure that my son is on a very special assignment that takes him away from the prison for a day or two. Huh? Give me an insight check, too. <laughs> Come on, please. please. Damn. Eight. Eight. Matt, when I look around the room, do no. I see any vents like I did in the other room? <laughs> no roll required. You don't. This okay. room very different than the Montero sort of receiving room. That was it was a little fancier. It was a little it was like upholstered, and like clearly they you know just chat in there. This room is like a meeting room, and the solid brick walls. There's no vents, and it's very bare. So you would feel like you'd be able to see it if there was. Yeah. So okay. it, it, not only that, when you entered the room and closed the door behind you, and I mentioned this to Doxley when she met with Niall, as soon as the door closes, like all of the noise from below, like goes away yeah it's like suddenly very very quiet so this the room not only it seems built to sort of keep sound in and keep okay. sound out okay thank you for an interesting proposal sir whatever you decide i appreciate your time i have to get back to the prison but please the room is yours i paid for two hours, so you've got maybe another 30 minutes. Enjoy your evening, and stay warm out there. Thank you. He finishes up his drink, and then he like has the bottle, and he leaves that on the table. Mm -hmm. And then he sort of pulls that brown hood. As he pulls the hood up again, like he very clearly, you've seen cloaks that uh, clinkers have worn before, and they're not lavish, but they have colors and stuff. He clearly picked a cloak to obscure his appearance. So he pulls the cloak up, very plain brown, like drab cloak, pulls it tight over his chest. Good evening. Good evening. Safe travels. So a chair over the door. For a moment, the door opens and you hear kind of the ah, hubbub hub, down below and then <sighs> door closes. <laughs> well. Morning. is <laughs> going to be <laughs> You can indeed. TC, I see you didn't bring up your leg situation. Uh, yes, I did. Not the severity of it. No. Why does he need to know that? Well, are these people that you want to help that seem weak? It's not hey. like you know the names of all the people who jumped you, do you? How are we going to be sure you get all those I names to him? I said accoutrement. I meant all his little buddies well, would hang around with him. Perhaps you can think of what everyone looked like and try to give him a description. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure he knows. Real specific. I'm sure he knows. Who his the son's young's core uh, uh, cronies are. Bullies. Gods. <laughs> Did you not see the look on his face? Yes. You better hope he's up to date in his son's social life. He's the warden of the prison. I'm sure it does that make is, him an attentive father? Well, if my son was working there, I'd keep a good eye on him. <laughs> Wouldn't you? I'm sorry. Well, we, Especially if I knew he uh, didn't seem at all surprised. Why are we still talking about this stupid son? <laughs> the God, God's damn war warden of the prison was just in the room with us. We are known to him. We are <laughs> being conscripted to are not uh, being conscripted. It is completely voluntary. Uh, under the table conscription, us, yes. There's another word for it, I'm sure. Could pay us uh, very handsomely, indeed. This is a wild proposal. He seemed to offer his protection. Oh, I should have known. should have asked him, has he ever done this before? Has he ever had anyone 
do this before. I'm sure is this he has not. His Prison first sin hasn't been around for this long. To me, I think it is safe to assume it is an experiment. And not that he did it before, and all the five of them are. <laughs> no. Long gone, God's as it were. No. Though, um... you, you assume? <laughs> Come now, Mr. Welker. I. I am sure it is risky, but I, I don't think that he is recruiting <laughs> flea bags and then sending them to their deaths one right after another. Wouldn't word have gotten out? I do, my fear is exactly that, that this town is too small for word not to get out. If we do this job for him, people are going to find out. If we are arrested, then we have the ability to come back. But what about these people? Then we will be greeted with cheer by the denizens of Broncolo. <laughs> this man seems like Mr. Rowe, our fugitive. Seems like he knows what he's doing. I don't know that I want to get involved in all of that. <laughs> well, perhaps you can. He is me. prolific in his <laughs> pornography and <laughs> other Yes, an well. interesting fellow. Wish I had gotten to meet him instead of just <clears throat> had to fight his. Can I take another look at those cake? They fish tell friends. quite a fascinating story. <laughs> I am inclined to do it. You do get the sense, and you, you mentioned this sort of already with a couple of the implications, without being able to discern like what post he may have held. This guy seems like he has family member, a pie maybe, or he, you know, like someone to get a, to have that many crimes before they get sort of put in prison mm -hmm. or jail. Like yeah. that's an awful lot of repeat offenses, especially some, you know, some of them are whatever, but some of the bribery and, and coercion and, you know, selling contraband, those are, those are legitimate crimes. You're from Peron, aren't you? Yes. Does the name family name? So is he. Name, does Ro mean something to you? The no. Ro? No. Hmm. Well. Is it common for somebody to have this many charges against them? Is Peron that lawless? <laughs> no, nothing like that. There is crime is there here and there. Drug problem? Something you're familiar with being smuggled in and out and around town that involves grave robbing or creating substances? I mean, it sounds like he was making things. Mm. Kate, in any big and even small city, there is, is always going to be drug smuggling and the like. It seems to but me. Were y'all involved in something like that? Your big scary family never tussled with him? I, I don't know the name Ro. I don't. I don't know. What's he off to do next? <laughs> <sighs> do yeah. we think he stayed in Bronk Hall? That's what I was thinking. This sounds like a place he would want to be. If he left, he wouldn't have left. The clerics would have come after him. Don't as long think? as he keeps his head in the sand, how are they going to find him? Yeah, he could be anywhere in the downwheeled or the upwheeled. Oh, yes, no, I mean, if he'd gone beyond the cusp. I'm sure he is still in the Bronk Hollow area. I, I, forgive me, I, I, I'm but not less about so that. familiar with the clerics, any cleric's abilities, but... No, no, I, I meant... They can find a man, whether he is blaspheming or not. Not within the cusp, we don't think. Outside of it, I mean. If he left Bronco. Yes, that is what think, I mean, which is why I... You think that he can pinpoint him without... If he kept his nose clean after all this, left the cusp, you think the cleric would come down on him no matter where he was or what he was doing? For his crimes within Broncolo, I guess I don't know. It doesn't seem a man like this would suddenly come clean. It's also tough to gauge because it's a... It's a a line riding list like there's no grievous offenses like he didn't murder anyone right. you know what i mean so like these are crimes where these happen outside and yes a prolific repeat offender might draw the attention of the clerics but you know he wasn't destroying church property or 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 um, you Just know killing vandalizing. yeah like a lot of vandalism right uh, but so there, it's iffy as to whether some of these might have drawn the attention of a, of a cleric i think this is someone who knows exactly how to get away with riding that line Perhaps. To not have a cleric know his business. Perhaps. 
<laughs> God. It does seem surprising, though, that based on all of these offenses, minor built up over time, that all of a sudden he would escape and many people would die. Doesn't that feel more violent than compared to what, what's on these papers? Well, yes. I suppose he didn't do the killing, but perhaps he was quite desperate in prison. Or involved with dangerous people who we do not want to get tangled up in. Well, he's certainly involved with dangerous Sahuagans. <laughs> Alien, how... How would one enlist Sahuigans like that? Could you train them? Could you befriend them? Is that something you are aware of? It's nothing that I've seen back home. I suppose it's not out of the question if you've had a connection with the creatures beforehand or something. You couldn't, they're not like, um, they're, they're intelligent enough that you couldn't like train them. And you could probably, I mean, they're smart enough to, you could bargain with them. Like yeah. like these kinds of, they have these little sea creatures have communities and stuff that like, you know, you could bargain with them if you, if you could speak their language and kind of, uh, if you had something to offer them. It wouldn't be like a friendship. You'd never be friends yeah. with the Suigans, but. We, we saw him, he was speaking Aquan. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, at that point, he was still like, yeah, uh, he was still in, he was still bound. Mm -hmm. So there, it's reasonable that we would know that he would have had to prior communicate with those creatures in order to call them. Like that's something we could. Maybe not know. all of them, but if yeah. if he struck a bargain or was able to communicate with one of them, it was, yeah. you know, go tell your friends, help me escape, uh, whatever. Yeah, that's theoretically yeah. possible. Yeah. <clears throat> or is there some <laughs> some specific scent or alarm that no matter who says it. They will come a running well, and a kill everything they see. There's a rat. That I wouldn't know, TC. But no, not every sea elf runs around ready <laughs> to summon some aquatic creatures. That seems like a gross generalization. <laughs> I humbly <laughs> ask ignorantly. No harm taken. There's... Someone said glub glub. <laughs> <laughs> We're on it. <laughs> glub glub. I, I need a night to think about this, but perhaps we can come to a conclusion in the morning? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm very confident in my abilities and what I do well, but the thought of having 48 hours inside of that prison to become great friends with enough people to suddenly blow a gigantic criminal um, situation that caused the deaths of multiple people, that seems like a lot of investigation and acting that maybe is not exactly my strong suit. You could tell the warden that and have you post it somewhere where you don't have a big connection with a lot of people, I suppose. Y'all done a lot of undercover work? Could, Feel could, confident you could t pull this off? You could be one of the prisoners. And then you just sit in a cell and talk to people. And not every prisoner is a bad person. People have their reasons to do things. Of course. Well, that I know. Also, as he expressed a reminder that it is not expressly to find out where Marcel Rowe is. Like, that would be great. That would be the yeah. absolute ideal. But, but there's more to it than that. Yeah. Find out He's who's sick of, yes, bribes. yes. Who's taking bribes, where drugs are coming in, or where contraband's coming in. Yes, it's it's all to the, in the larger umbrella of, of weeding out some of, the, some of the bad seeds. I'm inclined to do it, but of course, everyone, I, I may do it without people. You would do it on your own. I, I don't need to discover the whole plot. Only which bribes, which guards take bribes, which as you and I know, there were at least two posted on that goddamn bridge. <laughs> Morna, not to be rude, but <laughs> if I was a guard and I saw you walk up to me and start asking, so who's taking bribes around here? I would not be inclined to tell you. I would have somewhat you. more tact. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen this tact from you. I, you have not seen this tact from me. I guess if I have, maybe I wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> but no, I haven't. Kate, only because I like you for some <laughs> unknown reason, <laughs> just a reminder that the Monteros are not our friends. You don't get that much silk and jewels by being nice to people. So I'd be careful giving them our information in the future. I'm just saying, I don't think you'd be good undercover. Uh, well, I suppose you don't know how good I am at keeping secrets, nor I you. 
Morna is going to push herself <laughs> back from the table and go to Morna. Morna, before you leave. Yes. If you are so inclined, I I would help you. I am I would be your second at least. Are you not worried about your condition? <sighs> Who knows? Maybe it'll be an asset to whatever fucking story I cook up. Well, <laughs> another. You know, I. Would there be... was only the one person who made it off that bridge. Yes. Yes. And if he's not going to be around. And if he has spoken highly of us, then. Oh, wait. No, I couldn't be another person because everyone else was dead. Never mind. <laughs> Almost had it. <laughs> <laughs> I survived. <laughs> they drug me out of the sea. Perhaps you can be uh, in the, uh, who knows. We will <laughs> Or a gander. I, I will sleep on it as well, but uh, as I say, my initial instinct is to say yes. And I would be grateful for the help, Mr. Welker. Mm. Of course. Whether I join you two or not, the warden should know we also ran into those two clinkers on our way to the Stott boy. Uh, they're told to be safe in the downwield. They might recognize those us. two. What do you What do you mean was, those two? There was a man who said, "Hey, be safe." That's Grix or Kruthix. Oh, Kruthix. Yeah. Ah, ah. Uh, so perhaps if I don't join you guys, mm. I need to sleep on it. But the warden should know about that. I have Just no memory what he looks like. <laughs> if you think of that that passing. Better safe than sorry. I also so took a flyer from one of them. <laughs> You took it from the think the gentleman that was on the bridge with us. Oh, and the man next to him. I also may have sat on a toilet seat right after a clinker. <laughs> That's true. That is, there is no need to be crude. Got a good sniff I can describe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Elena. No. With some knowledge also of uh, <laughs> toilet seats. No. Uh, Are there toilets in this universe? We have Wait, Yeah, I was about to say, we don't have There's baths. Well, now we don't know. Know. Not toilet. plumbing, but there's, yeah, yeah. there's, there's toilets. There's holes there's out, yeah. around. Um, oh my God. Might have squatted over the same hole. Mm. Some of your knowledge of just how these systems kind of work, someone who's posted as a scout on detention pass, that might be their job, meaning right. like that kind of might not work at the prison. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like some of the people on the bridge worked at the prison because they were escorting prisoners. Like right. that was part of that project. But yeah, yeah like someone who was, who was like a relay man down on, on detention yeah. pass is like, that might not be someone who ever steps foot in the prison. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm inclined to go, uh, <laughs> I need to wash my weapons. But other Don't. than that, uh, probably call it a night. I don't know whether to feel <laughs> elated or, or scared that the warden would come off of his throne up there to approach we humble few. It's a lot of gold. Prison must be a mess. <laughs> Some place that big is bound to have leaks of a kind. Well, off I go. <laughs> <laughs> Morna's been like at the threshold. <laughs> Morna, one more thing. Yeah. You sure you don't want another round of that game? Uh, yeah. No, I am not quite well. All right, all right. Morna's first to leave. Anybody else lingering? Or people falling? If there's still some in the bottle here, you can finish the last. Do you see like just the... <laughs> the bottles? It looks like it came from the bar downstairs. Like it's mm. like it looks like the Mon one of the Monteros, you know, from behind the bar. Well. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. I was just about to excuse myself. <laughs> Were we not gonna go plumb the depths with you tonight? Uh, it's been a day. I think it's better if we all get our rest and tackle it on a better time. I don't know, when we're all feeling a bit more lively. I don't know what In to cold expect. cold light of day? I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll right. talk about it in the morning. Okay. Thank you for your willingness to be a part of it, though. It's getting nice and dark out there right now. <laughs> That's true. I'm just drunk enough to do something <laughs> yeah, stupid. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been up there myself, but... I'm... Certainly well plunging time. Right now. I... Too much on the plate. Uh, I think it'd be better later. Did you make other plans without us? No, I'm just... I uh, feel like I've nearly died twice today, and I just would like to sleep. Ah. Thrice. 
A ghost oh hand disappeared in, the room. <laughs> <laughs> in front of your face, Ilian. Um, in my head, very hard. I just remembered the third time. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys soon. Mm. See? <laughs> He's gonna sit there in silence for a bit. <laughs> Good night. Uh, and then she's just getting out of there. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> As TC takes the last <laughs> ten or so minutes to himself that have apparently been rented for this room here. On your way downstairs and out the door. Mm-hmm. You can't help but grin at the size of the crowd that has gravitated toward the center table. Hands flying up in droves when a seat opens up and a new player is being selected to take their turn. There are oohs and ahs when the ball bounces just beyond the blue stained jars. And jeers, friendly jeers, when another shot ricochets and falls victim to the snake. One small group that you pass, kind of over by the bar, seems to be welcoming in a new arrival, like a friend has just arrived, and as they do, you overhear, God strike me down if I'm lying, very first goddamn throw goes right in the egg, <laughs> and all the people kind of do <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> little reenactment of the moment. <laughs> you leave the warmth and good cheer of the lucky heathen behind when you step out into the thoroughfare, where a little bit of irrit- irritability still hangs heavy in the air. Things aren't nearly as contentious as they were when you came in from the downwield, but there's still a lot of long faces coming to terms with either the time they've lost or damage that's done to carts, buildings, you know, anything that was in their possession. Many others have called it an early evening after a couple of stressful hours. So the streets here are much quieter than you've seen them at any point other than maybe those post-trance wee hours of the morning. Up ahead at Bernard's boarding, it looks like a wagon of new arrivals may have been coming in when the storm hit. There's a few frazzled and disoriented people like getting out of the wagon with like hats askew and pulling their luggage free from the top there. You can see that they've had something of a tumultuous ride through the cusp and having had a similarly tumultuous ride yourself, you can empathize with the sort of out of sorts that they seem. (laughs) You're out in the thoroughfare. A little bit to the northeast lies Narvo C and C. What would you like to do? First thing Doxy's gonna do is reach into her bag and just pull out some like random cloth that she has when she travels with, and she's gonna start to wrap her right hand in the cloth, almost as if she's got some kind of an injury on it. Sure. Uh, she'll finish fastening it to her palm, and she's gonna kind of bury it in the dirt and the mud a little bit, try to dirty it up, sure. make it look worn. And then she's gonna take out three or four parchment from her bag. And in her left hand, she's gonna carry that. And in her right hand, she's gonna hold up her arm as though it's no longer usable. And she's going to <sighs> walk to Izzy's. Mm-hmm. These pieces of parchment, blank pieces of parchment? Yes. Okay, great. I didn't know if there was anything. Yeah. As you get a little bit closer, the courier business on most days, there's a constant ebb and flow. Packages coming in, packages going out, wagons are loaded, wagons are unloaded, letters are bundled, letters are dispersed. Right now, however, there's a bit of a noticeable lull. Once again, a product of the storm damage taking precedence. People that, you know, might have been patroning businesses are now sort of tending to the repairs. There's only a couple of customers inside as you stand just outside the door that are scribbling away at some last minute correspondence. You can see some people like quickly writing. One of them even kind of, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Sort of writing a letter because it's getting to be about closing time. Might even be a little bit past closing time. There's a little more action at the stables just off to your left where it appears an assortment of parcels are on their way out. And a halfling man in a black suit, Micah, is silently overseeing this process. A carefully curated division by type. You can see larger or less important items that are going into wagon beds, and then envelopes that are handed off to riders, presumably so that those letters can reach their destination faster than the packages as they move through a series of checkpoints and relays. A stocky man with greasy hair and rings on his fingers is just behind Izzy at her usual seat. It looks like he's been helping to secure loose items into structured packages, stuffing them with clumps of straw. So you'll see him kind of put something in, grab a clump of straw, sort of fit it into the crate. So he's making them safe for, you know, protecting against breakage on bumpy roads and long journeys. 
For all that you know about Izzy's reputation as a figure of influence in Brunk Hollow, she really does look content when she's just tending to the mail. Pride in her work, even though there's sort of more at play and beneath the surface, but the way she writes, the way she tends to the customers, the way she organizes the packages, like, the, it's not just, You've seen, you, Docs <laughs> the Tyrants, have seen fronts before. This is not a front, you know, it's a real business and she takes pride in it. So you see sort of Mike off to the left, tending to the packages and hand handing off some letters to riders, and then Izzy inside with a couple other people, just two, three other people on the interior there. So is, is anybody currently like interacting with Izzy at her little station? Nope, she's like writing, she, her okay. head's down, she's writing, and there's two other <clears throat> customers that seem to also be sort of penning letters. One person has a package that they're like tying up, so last minute little parcels and packages. Great, I'll walk up to Izzy. <clears throat> you start to head up, and she kind of hears you coming. Well, well, well. Look at what the Grimishka dragged in. All day I waited to see if Mr. Claiborne would pop by with an answer to my proposition. I don't suppose you hiding him behind your back? He take an invisibility potion from that little suitcase of his? If you would be so kind as to just stay open a moment longer. I'm not able to write my own letters. I was hoping you'd dictate it for me. I can do that. There's always one or two stragglers that push the limits of our working hours. She kind of looks around the room and the people look up and start to write even faster, sort of hearing that cue a little bit. An extra gold in it for you, just for the inconvenience. You can save your gold. I give them some small leniency this evening on account of the gales making a mess of everyone's day. Speaking of which, where were you when the winds came? Somewhere with a roof you could hunker down, I hope. In the downwheel, actually. Hmm. Out of town, then. Yes. Why don't you come on now, I'll talk in my office. Wade can handle whatever's left to see to. If you wouldn't mind, I'd prefer we dictate out here. Once you've set up the other people, of course. I'd hate to get in their way. They seem like they're still working on what they got. She takes out of it. Lead the way, then, Izzy. Are we going into my office or not? You made it sound like we weren't. <laughs> I'd like to stay out here. <laughs> that works fine for me. First letter. And I'm like, as... As I'm dictating this first letter, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep an eye on the two other people that are like, ready to go. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> To Peron, care of the Tyrunes. Address, I don't know it. Um. <laughs> the sea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll like lean in, I'll, I'll make it uh, obvious that it's like a private letter. You like, could do that, people. it's very quiet in here. I mean, the customers aren't so close to you that you know they could easily overhear you, but it is very quiet inside because there's just not, not many people in here. Hmm. Okay, I'll try to keep it quiet. Uh, Mommy. Niall is well. Citizens are looking to us to clear harmful beasts from the town and its border. But I'm sure it's only a matter of time before beasts mysteriously find their way into folks' homes and businesses. And when they do, I'm sure a fund for protection will be bountiful. There's a singular pillar to this community. Doxley will wink. A miner whose opinions seem easily swayed by those that work for him. So, we've made a deal with his right-hand man. Feed his boss council that progresses our plans, and in exchange, Scalisi shipping and its large shipment of wolf urine gets access to Solskar Bay whenever it pleases. I've enclosed a sample, and she'll take out from her bag the big mithril ore, one of the big chunks of it, and just pops it down. Still have it. Uh, I've enclosed a sample from one of the miners' dig sites, token for this new prosperous friendship. Your du Signed, Duxley. Mm. Wade. Hands out over now. 
said there was a second one. Yes, where are the rest of these people? I mean, still around, I'll say, you know, as that was happening, that person finished up their letter. So now they're kind of standing in line behind you, like like just three feet behind you. I love that. Uh, oh. Doxy's gonna turn. This one's gonna be a long one, so I'll allow you to help these other customers that are already prepared. Is this something that would be easier done in my office? No. <clears throat> Motions to the next person. They just kind of get an address put down, sealed, signed. She hands that over to Wade. The person with the package comes up. Can I? Please, by all means. Oh, just be a second. No it's worries. Uh, this needs to go to Saywall. We sort of gives an address, person's name, blah, blah, blah. She takes the package. Exchanges a little bit of currency, hands that over to Wade. Finally, that person turns, starts to head out. Great. So now it's just. It's just Izzy's the three folks. of you. Yeah, okay. Dizzy, the man behind, and. Thank you for having patience for my pretense of being here, Izzy. Whatever gets us to the next day, I suppose. You can rest your pen, your quill. There's no other letters. <clears throat> <laughs> In regards to Gujak, he has nominated me as his proxy to reopen the negotiation. Is this the part where you asked for money from me? I don't want your money, Izzy. What do you want? I'm not here for me. I'm here for you, and I'm here for Gujak just as I was told to be. All right. Where does that leave us? Over the last few days, I've gotten close with Gujek, and I've felt his temperature run a little cold on Broncolo. Hmm. So I've spent time understanding why. It wasn't you running that temperature cold, was it? No. Make a persuasion check. <gasps> Nat 20 like oh, oh, let's go. Oh, that means nothing. Yeah. Oh, no. Huge. Oh, well done. Thank you. It was all me. Yeah. <laughs> go on. He misses his family. <laughs> Doesn't that just melt your little heart? It does. We all get a little homesick now and again, don't we? Sure. So. My thinking was, you handle the money however you see fit, but instead of quite the sum that you've offered him, offering to get a few of his kin to Broncolo. Maybe provide housing for him. I know of a house that's available. You could either rent it to him or buy it and then sell it to him at twice the price. I don't really care. Gujek wants to bring his family to Broncolo. That's what he wants. Or rather, that's what I told him he wants. <laughs> his idea was to leave. Hmm. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It ain't nothing to reunite a couple of old friends. Makes the worry wash away. Get to your work clear-headed. Glad you're so amenable, is he? Tell Mr. Claiborne to get me a list. A short list of names. And we'll get the good news up to the Ograms as soon as we're able. And should I tell him that any part of his original deal, the amount, what should I tell him of that? I think we're all right on that account. All right. I'm very pleased that he's come to this decision with your help, a beginning of a very fruitful partnership. I know what he brought me before was mostly samples, so I want him to come by in the morning to discuss how soon we can be seeing some real production. And in the future, when I send someone to fetch Gujek, 
Gujek better show the fuck up. Understood. With all due respect, I was in the middle of working him, and I really don't like when others try to meddle in that. Hmm. Not you. Your boys. I don't know what tactics they would use. I understand what you're saying. I also understand that a week ago, there was no you to run interference between me and Gujek. All right. So long as you don't forget that without me, Gujek would be on a wagon right now going north. Maybe. <clears throat> when last we spoke, he said he'd need a place to work. I'm gonna have Wade set him up with a nice tent by the gnomes till we can get him a more permanent solution. With rental slip in hand, Wade'll come by to Paramount tomorrow with a cart, help him move whatever supplies he's got packed away in them suitcases. Understood. Now, join me in my office for a moment, would you? Doc's will roll her eyes once he is in front of her <laughs> and follow her. Wade's still there, kind of tying up the packages and things. She goes to that side door. She rises from her seat. She walks over. No rush or urgency. You once saw Gujek disappear behind that door. She had her little private meeting. She motions with her hand to follow. She steps inside. And you take in the confines of this very small office now from the interior rather than, you know, peering through the window. With the lavish comfort of a padded chair behind her desk and several rows of bookshelves affixed to the southern wall, it has the appearance of like a private reading room more than anything else. It's one crackling fireplace away from somewhere you'd go to kind of be alone with your thoughts as you disappear into a good novel. Many of the books, as you glance at them as you enter, are blank along the spine. They might be records that she's keeping, but there are some labels that you can make out. Some names like Discuna Discoveries, Saywall in the Beginning, and Tribes of the Northern Ranges. It looks like, for the most part, it's like historical nonfiction that she has. Though you do spot in the bottom left corner, the Libidinous Man from Vancor, a tome that appears virtually untouched as it collects dust on the lower shelf. <laughs> Do I know what that book is? Um, you have not read that book, no. Do, is it, do I know if it's fiction? Well, uh, it could be. Libidinous man's like the sexy, uh, horny man from Vancor. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, Libidinous, Hi. high libido. Heck yes. Mm. <laughs> I don't want that one. The torqued man. Um, <laughs> yes. the, the tent pitched yeah. from the Libidness? Yeah. Libidness, yeah. Libid I thought he was like, libidness. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Mr. Bidness. Yeah, Libidness. Yeah. yeah. The, the Libidness. Yeah, the Bidness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. just we Libidness. As soon as she crosses the threshold into her office, she'll drop the whole her hand business. <clears throat> what? Nothing. Have a seat. Mind your Libidness. Hand business. <laughs> Now, while Gujek's playing with his beakers and Niall's still out working in the cusp, I got some thoughts on how I can use you. <laughs> a time may come when Gujek needs you to procure him some ingredients for his concoctions, but for now, I got something a little more violent in mind. My roads have been more turbulent as of late, and not only does that erode my courier's credibility, it sets a bad precedent for when we start bringing in more supplies as part of our grander design. There's two particularly nasty thorns that have been all up in my backside, and I know you're familiar with at least one. Mm. Horton Boyd continues to make the cusp a bigger liability than it ought to be. Got problems enough without him hassling my drivers. And then there's these goblins can't bring themselves to abide by Hank Honk's truce. Normally, a downwheel ain't my area of concern, but their raids have gotten awfully frequent, and something needs to be done before we start caravanning supplies up toward that new spot we got picked out. These wouldn't happen to be goblins that ride about on boars and whatnot? I've heard something to that effect. My understanding is that the Merc Hall already has a contract out for them. I don't give a shit about the Merc Hall, but I'm tired of them messing with my wagons. Do either of those seem like something that could fall under your purview? Both. I would love to have another crack at that Horton Boyd fella, but I can see why the goblins are a little bit more attainable in a short period of time. Is that your preference if you had to pick one first? Sure. 
I'll gather what we know, which is admittedly not much, and get it to you by the morning. How does that sound? That sounds delightful. Once we've dealt with Boyd and his goblins, not his goblins, the goblins, <laughs> there's a couple of people you and Micah can pay a visit to. People that own some claims that we might be looking to buy. Mm. I want to know what their starting price is so I know how hard to push when the time comes. Now, before I forget, I owe Mr. Claiborne an initial sum upon his acceptance, which I suppose as proxy you are accepting. We agreed on 1000 up front, and then the rest comes once the production started. Now go see Mike outside, tell him Gujek gets his first fee. He'll get the gold for you. You can take it back and be the bearer of good fortune. Quite an honor, thank you. And since we're now both paddling in the same direction, anything in town you haven't been able to get that you want? Anything I can help you find as a way of saying welcome aboard? I want so much, Izzy. <laughs> may I think on it until the morning? You may. That's all. May I ask you something? What is your relationship like with Bison? Mutual respect. <laughs> <laughs> Would you put yourselves on equal playing ground right now? In terms of what? Influence over Broncolo? <laughs> Tough to determine. Bison's got the muscle. But I think I've got more people's ear, if that's what you're asking. We've done several jobs for him at this point. I've heard. <laughs> Trying to cozy up to whoever I can. If you ever need information, and one of your men just isn't close enough to the ground, close enough to the action. That's what I'll be here for. I take that under consideration. And one final thing. Please. Would you be so kind as to tell me how you voted for the statue? I said to leave it down there. I think you were right. Time will tell, I suppose. Time will tell. It's a pleasure seeing you, Izzy. Have a good evening, miss. Cheers. I'll get up and walk myself out. Back outside. You come out, back, kind of back out into the main area there where uh, Wade is still sort of shuffling through some letters. He kind of looks up. Have a wonderful evening. Evening. There's a, f a fun, exciting noise. What was what that? that? Someone's phone? A phone? Was that the oh, computer? Dingly, dingly, ding. That, it was a computer. computer. I don't know if anyone could Oh, it was, it was TikTok Is saying... Is it a TikTok thing? Oh, it was TikTok. Oh, it was TikTok, TikTok signing us off for us. Oh, good. TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Thank you. Bye, TikTok. Doodly, doodly, doo. Fuck you. Doodly, doodly, fuck you. Hey, go fuck yourself. Uh, Advanced Dungeons rated us with oh, part six. Oh, thank Maybe that was the noise. Thank oh, you. Oh, gosh. They were on TikTok. Now yes. they're down. Doodly, 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 doo. Um, wow. Great. <laughs> I will try to find Micah. <laughs> great. You head back out yeah. in... As you head back outside and over on, it's on your right now that you're exiting, he's over at the kind of stables area again, still sort of handing off. He sorts through a couple letters, hands them off to one of the riders who puts them in kind of a bag and then ha! starts to ride. He's sort of sorting things on the wagon right. there. So you can head in that direction, but before we get to that. <laughs> <clears throat> Heading back downstairs, business is booming and boisterous. The casino's slow start to the evening only a temporary affair. Now that you're familiar, uh, not that you're familiar enough to say for certain, but you think that there might be some new faces here as well. People coming through the doors, walking straight up to the snake in the grass table after perhaps hearing that there was a new game that involved neither cards or dice. Uh, sort of not some people's flavor, but uh, a newer addition to the, to the uh, floor. Liam and Chelsea are watching from a distance in the kind of back corner occasionally raising a glass to pass passing patrons. They're sort of standing there and you'll see them. 
as people compliment them on the new table, say that they're having a good time. If what you told them upstairs about the dig site and the magic is maybe weighing heavy on their mind, they're doing an excellent job not showing it. They do a very good job kind of putting back on the sort of customer service casino smile. And you really do have to wonder maybe what they're hoping to accomplish. You've talked about this as a group, but you don't know if they're getting at something or if they just like being a kind of keeper of knowledge and being in the know as these sort of things start to crop up around Broncala. The first person to come back down was Morna, was the first to come back down. So you come back down to the floor, is there anything? I'd like to go back and briefly say something to the Monteros, but sure. I, while I make my way back to them, I'd like to make a scan of the room and see if I recognize if that guard is there. Uh, the clinker guard? Organder. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Give me a uh, perception check. As yeah, that's who we we both saw him, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Perception. That mm -hmm. is a sixteen. Sixteen. You take a kind of a circuitous route just so you can walk through most of the casino floor just to see if you see anyone. And not only do you not see him, you don't see anyone that has any kind of clinker accoutrement. Like mm -hmm. there is a lot of business happening at the prison right now in the sort of wake of the attack. So sure. less people probably spending their nights kind of gambling in Brunk Hollow. Fair enough. You see no one of clinker attire. They do kind of shed the jacket in the evening, but even so, you, no one that you think is a clinker. Okay. Um, I'm going to go up to the Monteros. <clears throat> Great. You head up there. Ah. Uh, welcome back. A fruitful discussion, I hope. Yes, very. Um, I wanted to uh, discuss my reward. Uh, <laughs> forgive me. But uh, Please. I was hoping we could schedule a conversation about a possible loan. I know you are in charge of the bank. No, <laughs> we are not in charge of the bank. Oh. Simply um, helped it get off the ground in the early stages. Ah, perhaps Those in might... charge of the bank are Peyton Guilfoyle oh. and Tori Lamb. Okay. Uh, would you be able to put in a good word with me? For that? Perhaps. Perhaps we could have a discussion sometime tomorrow. We can. I believe that the process is fairly simple. You put in a request, they lay out their terms for lending, percentages and whatnot. If they don't know you well, they require some kind of collateral or a third party guarantor to minimize the risk. Depending on the size of the loan you wish to take out, we would perhaps be willing to act as guarantors. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Kennedy told me about a piece of land. But, uh, but we can talk about it in the morning. I don't wish to talk business with all of this frivolity around us. With the new installation, we do like to be on the floor as much as we can to answer questions and encourage additional rounds of play. As you should. I hope it is a fruitful evening for you. Yes. I will say, property investment in Bronk Hollow, always a good idea. That was my thinking exactly. And I'm gonna give them a very courteous nod. Sure, they do, they and return. Head, head on out. All right, start to head out. Next person coming down, I believe, was Alien. You kind of come down, similar scene. You don't think, it, you took a little moment after Morna left, so you don't see her, but the active, busy floor, people coming and going. Um, doing a scan of the room, Catching eyes with the Monteros. Mm -hmm. Do I? You again? You as you sort of catch eyes, they sort of give you a little cheers. I want to go like as if I'm like walk towards them, mm -hmm. but then just give them a nod and then head out. Sure. And then I would like mm -hmm. to wait for Kate as soon as I see Kate outside. Okay. Kate is the next one to come down. Again, a little bit more time passing just briefly as you talk to TC, you get down. As you get down to the floor, you look over to your right and you see Ilian sort of exiting out the door. So mm. it wasn't much longer after that, but yeah. you're back down on the floor. What would you like? Yeah, I'll just uh, catch eye contact with the Monteros and say like a thank you <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Another <laughs> glass and nod and smile. Yeah, and then head out. Start to head out. Yeah. A little more time passes. TC, you get down to the floor. Same kind of thing. <laughs> Slow Aww. clomping down the stairs. Nobody hit me. <laughs> you got to make my way down. Um, as you get down, there's another kind of, you hear like a tick, <laughs> oh, someone like just this getting the egg there. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to, you know, give a t t motion that we're all cleared out here. 
you're not. And uh, just do a quick scan of the room to see if I recognize anybody else. Sure, give me a perception check. <laughs> wow. <sighs> it's what have you? It's, this is your fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> Perception is 11. <laughs> 11. The only thing, you don't recognize anyone new, but yeah. you do clock, you know, a couple of the people that you saw before. Uh, Warren's here, and that guy from the Noun Wield is here. Um, That's right. That was who I was thinking Yeah, so of. you're able to see him because you had you already knew yeah. he was here. You spotted him from before, but uh, you don't see anyone new. I'm, I'm going to circle him a little bit, but I'm going to make my way over there okay. towards him. Great. Yeah. Just sort of work the floor a little bit, smile and nod, sort of walking by people cheering, throwing cards down, tossing oh, dice. Oh, you hear the shoulders. Yeah, 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 a couple oh, of jostles. People give you yeah. pats on the back. <laughs> you hear the kind of, <laughs> of the roulette wheel kind of moving around. As you're sort of circling around one of the tables, you look over and he's at a roulette table. So it's kind of spinning around. You see him kind of looking over. It eventually stops. Oh. Oh, and there's like money being collected and stuff. So. I'll kind of make my way like right up behind him, really. Great. So he's he's very focused on the focused. kind of the table. <clears throat> For someone who's had such luck recently, I think you'd have a bigger pile in front of you. Ho, 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 ho. If it ain't my purveyor of second chances, I got nothing but thanks in my heart. And if those thanks were gold. I'd save some for you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, young man. Uh, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> well, they, uh, they did like they said. Took me to the prison, and when the prison wouldn't take me, they just, they relented, they cut me loose. I promised to try and do my best to pay him back over time. Uh. Um, <laughs> that's not what they said, was it? They said they were gonna try and take him back to the prison. But. They're, I thought they were gonna kill him if they did, if that didn't work. And, um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> 16, 16, 16. Forgive me, I... I you parted ways with your friends, uh, uh, amicably. I wouldn't say amicably, but we went our own separate ways. All thanks to you and your friend. Oh my. my goodness. Well, uh... Glad to see you hearty and healthy. Uh, uh, are you sticking around in Brunk Hollow for the time being? I think I will. I think I will. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm going to leave, uh, but I'm going to wait outside and I'm going to. I'm going to see. I, uh, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to go kind of to the other end of the room. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on him and see if he sticks around here for. Okay. For the night, yeah. Uh, how, this place is gonna be open for hours, yeah? It's open, this is one of the later open. This and the music box like are open, certainly, at least till midnight. Uh, all right, is is Samson and Samson still open? Excuse me, good as gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, you did it. Again, this is about the same time that Doxy went. This is okay. getting like a little past seven, so maybe, like they might be closing up and might be willing to do last minute thing, so maybe. I'm gonna try to quickly get over to Good as Gold sure. and come back here to see if he's still Great. here. Great, you scoot out the door really quick. We'll do a little time. <laughs> so Ilian, you were waiting at the door and mm -hmm. Kate, you emerge outside, back out into the thoroughfare there and Ilian seems to be sort of waiting. Um, I didn't want to bring it up. I don't know where you're walking. I'm heading to the Paramount. Um, I was gonna go tell uh, the Merc Hall about the Goblin Raiders, to give, oh. an up, give them an update. Great. And the magic thing. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to catch up. I didn't bring it up in front of anyone, but how are things with your mother? Has that transpired at all? You were quite flustered this morning and just wanted to follow up on that. Thanks. All right. If you need anything, um, I'll be here. If, even if just an, an ear to bend. But. Yeah, if she doesn't leave tomorrow morning, then we might need to try that rat plan. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll do that. I'll let you know. <laughs> all right, good luck at the Merc Hall. Thank you. I'm head to the Paramount. Are you indeed heading there? Was that a ruse? No, I do <laughs> want to go there. We head in that direction. So TC will follow you back out. Morna, where were you headed after you left? I was going to go to the river to wash Bill. OK, Bob. great. And head in that direction down toward the river. Bobbing. Totally normal. <laughs> totally normal. TC will follow you over to Goodix Gold for a moment. <clears throat> the storefront of Good as Gold is currently a little bit of a mess, but not like a storm rolled through kind of mess. 
it looks more like extensive damage, increased demand kind of mess. Uh, mm. Like the Samson brothers are both picking things up off the floor, they're organizing shelves, but they seem happy to do so. For a general store can certainly stand a benefit when things get broken and need to be replaced. Like it looks like people were like coming in to grab tools and things like all stuff mm. off the shelves to repair and replace what was lost or broken. You may have missed the kind of earlier rush that happened immediately following the wins, but you're not the only customer. So they are still sort of open, although they seem like they're kind of finishing up. There's one or two people poking around the section that has tools, ropes, nails, other kinds of hardware. And someone else looks to be measuring a large pane of glass. You see someone kind of measuring, you get the impression that maybe one of their windows broke, you know, as some debris came crashing through. So they're waiting to see if they can kind of replace it with another pane of glass there. Anybody in the immediate vicinity that I recognize? Uh, no, nobody in here that you know offhand. As you kind of move in, it seems like the two brothers are talking to each other and I don't understand why people don't just put things back where they found them. Look, I'm standing right here and I can see the chisels. In fact, if I lean over just a little bit, I can actually touch the chisels. And yet here is a chisel in a box of saws. <sighs> so it up, puts it over in the chisels. Gentlemen, evening. Mr. Welker, welcome back. Yes. Uh, I will say right away there are supplies that we're a little low on for obvious reasons, but is there something I can help you find? Just one, just a healing potion. Yes, of course. Uh, 60 gold? Yes. Nothing. I want to do the deal too, but everybody's <laughs> fucking around. <laughs> um, just yeah, the one, oh, please. Oh, retrieve. <laughs> the healing potion. As he's kind of walking over to where they, there's kind of a shelf that there's, the healing potions are up on, he talks as he's kind of walking. I don't know if you walked by earlier, but our sign came down in the wind. Oh, goodness And for gracious. a brief moment, we were Samson and Samson Imports again. Oh, sign oh. underneath. Confusing. It just meant that we had to explain the transition to good as gold all over again. <laughs> And then one person came in asking if we could direct them to good as gold. And I had to... Oh my god. Did Actually, you... now that I say that, I think it might have been in jest. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope you didn't send them somewhere else, but they Ooh. got you good. I suppose they did. Uh, here's your healing point. Uh, thank you, and 60 gold. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive me, uh, uh, I thought about going about town to uh, help with helping hands, but as you can see, I'm a bit put out. Yes, I'm sorry to see that. I, I didn't want to say something if it was uh, personal. Quite all right. Quite all right. Uh, sustained in the downwield, a, a tricky fall? Uh, a tricky fall, yes, yes. Uh, uh, we do carry crutches and canes if you ever need something This like one that. will do just fine. Actually, um, ah, this is probably a question for uh, the blacksmith in town. Metalworking? No, just that, uh, I just had this idea. Uh, you see this dagger that I brought from you here, yes. and you see this cane that I've got here. Well, but yes. Both of them have a handle, and I just thought if there was some way to fuse the two. You'd like to obscure it, uh, sort of as a hidden compartment? Something like that. You might have to go to the blacksmith only because I believe that dagger's too wide for the cane. You, you're right. going to need a thinner blade. Right, good thinking. Or, or a very, very thick cane. Yes, <laughs> too, too thick, too unwieldy. We could get you a walker. No, no. <laughs> we could get you a TC Welker walker. <laughs> this has served me just fine. Very well. But good night. Have a good night, Mr. Welker. Come back in. Tuck away my healing potion there and try to quickly make it back. Great, scoot your way back. Yeah. Make sure that you know you didn't kind of lose him in the crowd or if he left mm -hmm. during that time, so you scoot on back. But that is where we're going to oh. take oh. Oh. Uh, So we'll be following people around town a little bit. Little shenanigans uh. time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, see uh, if TC can kind of discern what that guy Oh, this been. is my whole night. Now. I'm following <laughs> this guy around. Right? That guy didn't know it, but he turned away and TC's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> he killed those two people. Oh, he definitely killed those two people. Them. Yeah, he and killed them. And he took all their money. <laughs> yes, he's And like, followed yeah, their house. Uh, so now, by the law of morality, I can now kill him. Yeah, for sure. And, and have that, and take his money in house. Yeah, that's true. Land owning. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that plan. <laughs> that's free real estate. <laughs> that <laughs> is free real estate. Um, thank you uh, all so much. Uh, we'll take a little quick break, enjoy the games, get your Brunk Hall Powerball in, and uh, we'll see you all on the other side. <laughs> 
See you so soon. Bye. 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 Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Tabletop Notch and Brunk Hollow Chapter 23. Hope you had a lovely little break, I assume, because I didn't hear raucous cheering that nobody won the Brunk Hollow Powerball. Oh, no. My condolences. Try Snake there. in the Grass instead. Higher win rate on Snake in the Grass. Yeah, actually, that's though. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to dive back in, but before we do so. Yeah, I got to thank some folks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And the Advanced Dungeons that rated us. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry we didn't say it right away. Mm -hmm. There was shit going down. That's true. Um, why am I looking at February? Okay. February. Last month February. February. We moved forward an hour today. <laughs> Never mind a month. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, Doki, uh, that random Twitch guy resubscribed. Pokodoko seven stream trick. Card speak three stream trick. Cool shaver resubscribe. Cool shaver five hundred bits. Jumpy uh, resubscribe. Raccoon Robin. There's a lot of geese. Five bits. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was doing a good job. Good Eight job. Chapter, resubscribe. Sure. They left behind. Resubscribe. Plain rug gave out five community subs. Thank you so much. Helljack did twenty bits. Uh, Frank and Car resubscribed. Insanely flatulent. Ten stream streak. Hello. Oh. The Helljack three hundred twenty six bits. Brownie. Uh, J Brownie five hundred bits. Thank you. And then GRGX GRXG resubscribed. Thank you guys. Thank. Very Gurgax? Is that Gurgax? Mr. Gurgax? Are you there? Oh my Gurgax. goodness. And Gurgax. welcome back, TikTok. We'll see you for the next hour and six minutes before TikTok signs us off. Yeah. Or, or I don't know, the We're... person out there reporting us over and over. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this stream's back. I hate this stream. Could happen. <laughs> Could happen. Returning to the um, sort of entryway of the Lucky Heathen is TC, sort of hustling back as best he can with the uh, sort of cane one step at a time. You get to the, do you want to actually go inside? Are there or? windows that I could conceivably yeah, take a- windows to the Lucky Heathen. All right, not being, I don't know, are there people out smoking pipes on the- <laughs> People the walking porch? through the thoroughfare, there isn't really like, right. there's not like a smoker's crowd outside. People smoke indoors here, so. Okay. Uh, oh, they haven't changed the laws yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been 20 years. <laughs> uh, I will look through the window first, just, just Give me a in the same-ish area. Mm -hmm. He's the big guy. Ooh. So loud. Oh nice. my god. He's what back, baby. That's a natural one. Oh! You lost him. <sighs> you don't see him out on the floor anymore. Oh my god. I mean, the crowd's god. big. You're, you're outside. I'm outside. If you I'm were to gonna, spend I'm, some time like going yeah. in and searching around, but yeah, you're, I will, you're in the window and you kind of, yep. you can't like locate him on yep. the floor. I'll I'll step back inside. Okay. I'll, I'll kind of make for the bar first okay. to, to not seem... Um, I don't know, obvious about looking around. Sure. And then I will do a, a, har a harder scan. Great, give me an investigation check. So you're moving through the crowd. You're trying, because there's a lot of people kind of leaned over looking around. You have to kind of subtly try and get a look at all the people crowded around the tables. I can run right here. 13. 13, okay. A little bit of time as you're looking around. And at first, you don't see anyone and then you feel a little tap on your shoulder and it feels like a little clawed finger. You turn around and Chelsea Montero's behind you. Mm. Looking for someone. Mm. I noticed you were trying the floor without trying the games. Oh. You're on to me. Ah, uh, yes. I, there was someone I recognized that I didn't get a chance to speak with before the stores closed, but... And I'll, I'll describe him real quick. Okay. I'll say there was a gentleman um, that I ran into out in the downwield. Uh, <gasps> Acton, I think his name was. Mm. And he was playing, and I'll point over, and did you happen to see him? She motions and walks. She heads over to that back, <laughs> sort of uh, farthest from the door where most of the poker tables are. And she sort of gets... There's like three or four tables kind of in a line and she doesn't walk right up to it, but she gets nearby and then she motions. And there's someone who's, the reason you didn't see him is like, he's sitting at a round table and his back was very much to you, but okay. he's got like cards kind of up. So it would have been very hard to sort of yeah. find him without help. 
Ooh. But he's sort of sitting there, just sort of with his cards, you know, playing the table there with uh, with four or five other people at the table. Oh. Thank you kindly. Moves back another ground. Disappear. Uh, all right. I'm gonna <laughs> um. So he's over, maybe furthest from the door at this. Point. Yeah, the poker tables are on the like farthest from the door, far wall. Like there's and, four or five of them. And if the uh, snake in the grass is in the middle, kind mm-hmm. of at this point. Yeah. Brunk Hollow double passes maybe. Those are closer to the front the, door. Yeah. But mid, <laughs> there those are closer to <laughs> the front. So like okay, front door, double pass roulette tables, the snake in the grass, and the poker tables in the back is pretty much how it goes. Like um, front and back. I'm gonna go and try to my best to keep an eye on him. I'm gonna find a seat at one of the double pass tables. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. People play still kind of. Are you trying to play a game? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, great. At least at first, I certainly will, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll do, we'll, we'll circle back as you mm-hmm. sort of keep an eye on uh, your mark there in the corner. Wow. And we're gonna move over to the stables outside of Narvo's CNC. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you've exited out, um, out the door of Narvo's mm-hmm. CNC, and now you can see once again, sort of uh, Micah, Positioning packages, ordering people to various like across the bridge, and so. Is he like speaking? He is not. Uh, Got it. Never. I will approach. <laughs> Good evening. Tips his hat. Uh, Izzy instructed me to retrieve Gujak's initial fee from you. Starts to walk. I will follow him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Micah leads you to the structure, and it's on your map, that neighbors Narvo CNC to the northeast. Like just, it's between Narvo CNC and the blacksmith there. There's like one, there's like two old structures there. Okay. It's a solidly built stable. It's a sort of series of stables. And as you get closer, it's bigger than you were able to discern from the thoroughfare, because there are a few kind of trees in the way that sort of obscure some of the larger portion of the building. It doesn't necessarily surprise you. Izzy obviously isn't hurting for coin, and a courier service needs a reasonable stock of wagons and horses that they can, you know, rent out or, or use for their purposes. Mm-hmm. But it does kind of spring up very suddenly. It's almost like entering sort of a mountain dwelling where maybe the mouth of the cave is very small, and then it opens up into a larger, cavernous, more grand appearance. Entering into a new place, especially with what is basically at this point a business associate, if you could be so bold as to call yourself that. Mm. This is normally the kind of time when uh, some exposition and small talk might happen, but Micah, knowing that he, knowing how he operates, never struck you as that struck you as that kind of guide. So the two of you stroll silently under the kind of there's a little stone archway toward the dozen or so stalls. You can smell some familiar smells of leather, hay, horses, feed, a usual kind of stable barn smell that's very familiar to you. As you step inside, it's just at that moment that Micah stops and he reaches up a hand to halt you. And he doesn't turn, but the sudden level of intensity that you discern kind of on his face puts you on alert and you listen. Give me a perception check. 12. 12. As you halt, the two of you listen, and there's a little bit of noise coming from the thoroughfare, but it's, again, you've sort of moved off a little bit, so it's quiet back here. And you hear some very quiet, whispered conversation. And it seems like Micah certainly has picked up on that as well. Micah takes like another step in and you pick up just a couple little bits of conversation. It's in here somewhere. I know it's in here somewhere. You hear some like straw being moved around. Hurry up, hurry up. I know, I know. Do those quality of voices sound like goblins? Um, yes and no. One of them no, one of them yes. Oh, it's Morna. <laughs> <laughs> She's back there with Clark Bart. Okay. <laughs> Micah reaches down and he unhooks his little hand crossbow from his belt there. We go back. Okay, Doxley's going to reach back for her javelin. Takes another step forward. He 
peeks in around the corner, kind of where the stables are. You can see him sort of scanning. Takes another step forward. A little more of that conversation. I know it's in here. I know it. Just give me a second. You can also hear, based on the sounds, and with a reasonable perception check, that based on the shuffling of the straw, and also what sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like this one, at least one person is like in a stall, like in one of the like horse stalls okay. in the stable area. And he's like moving something around. And uh, if, just to make sure I'm understanding, th this is Izzy's. State, state. Yes, hall. yes. Okay, she, this, oh, is, this her is owned by property. Narvo CNC. This is okay. her property. Okay, yes. got it, got it. Yeah, Great. this is not any sort of public use or, yeah. Okay. Follow his gestures. Give me a stealth check. Disadvantage. Oh boy. Ooh. Didn't you change into your good clothes though? Why would you be in armor? You don't have disadvantage. That's but true. But you're not armored. I, Do it would have been that. delightful anyways. <laughs> uh, that's a 23. 23. Wow. Oh, let's go. <laughs> even with a big modifier on Micah, Micah rolled a 21. So you wow. even. Idiot. <laughs> he looks back and you're way closer than you than he thought. <laughs> <laughs> You both of you peer around the corner and a little bit that's helping aiding this approach is the fact that there are a few lanterns hung in here because Izzy has not sort of closed up fully for the night. There's like, you know, one, two, three, four, just on some of the wooden beams that are dividing the stalls, a couple lanterns, but it's very shadowy in here. You can see the shadows sort of ebbing and flowing as they hit the edges of some of these wooden uh, barricades and some of the gates between the horses. So you kind of stick to the shadows, you follow Micah as he kind of, come, kind of comes in, um, and I'm gonna show you something. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit, what? <clears throat> can I turn it on? Uh, one second, let me just make sure I'm on the right thing. Oh, well, yeah, this okay, is so already what is on. My, what is my armor? Um, Let's see. Uh, and yes, yeah, so you can turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> so the shield, minus three. Yeah, I guess I don't have my shield either. Minus three, and then minus. Oh boy. The... How do I calculate that? I think I wrote that down. Right? Ten plus dex or like Temple stacks. Yeah, 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 Oh, I can see it. I look at the screen. All good. Uh, let me brighten it up a little bit. It's a little dark. There we go. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be Great. Your business so so. you and uh, Micah have kind of, you're sneaking like through here. Okay. Ooh, so Micah. the two of you are kind of slowly creeping in through there. And what you're seeing as you peek around these sort of wooden beam stalls, let me move you a little bit closer, <laughs> is someone's right there. There's a goblin standing near one of the stalls that looks to be kind of keeping watch, like, oh my God, so okay. looking around. And he does not appear to be the one who's making that sound that you heard before. You hear some rustling coming from one of those stalls. Okay. And also there appears to be a second lookout Looking oh at, like, there's God. like a back entrance to the stalls there, so there's multiple sort of ways in here. Do I recognize that goblin keeping watch? You do not. Okay. No. Mm. Thank God. So <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jab one through the face. <laughs> Micah creeps a little bit closer. Okay. You follow. Yep. Mike sort of wa watches for a moment. <sighs> Micah. Quickly. He's so tiny. Yeah, is he a gnome or a... He's a halfling. He's a halfling. Okay. He scoots across. Okay. To that spot there. Great. I'm gonna hug the, yeah, the wall that I'm nearest to then, so we're right. kind of at opposite ends. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're able to kind of peer around the corner here. Yeah, so I'm gonna like try my best to just keep my peripherals on Micah in case he's trying to like signal something and the goblin. Huh? That's keeping watch. Sort of gets around to this. <laughs> <I know. laughs> <laughs> you gotta, yeah. you gotta defocus. Yeah. You look out into the area of the stall here, where again, more kind of rustling happening, and Mike appears around the corner. 
Oh, he's gonna fire off two bolts here. Great. Roll initiative for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah baby. Oh, let's go. Oh, baby. Rolling yeah. big. Yeah, 19. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> he goes to fire, and your thing is already through the gun. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. I'm a fucking boss. Um, okay, it is going to be. Uh, I can easily see because of the rolls. It's going to be Doxley. Okay. Micah. Okay. Um, oh, and uh, human and goblins together. Okay. So the two lookouts are both is. goblins. Great. And he's working with the goblins. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So your guess so is in now. Stocks. Oh my Didn't sound like scary. That'd be kind of sick. Gonna die. Gonna die. And you have your like adjusted AC because of uh, not wearing armor and the shield. It's be like you're working yes. with the goblin too. It's just too. ten plus dex, right? For for AC. Yeah. Great. So twelve. Ooh. Look out, my damn. Okay. We're Give him libidness. Two. We'll be in bed rest together. <laughs> All right. So can have my potion. Uh, Mike is gonna be uh, the first to fire here. So this is a surprise round. Okay. Um, because you two were able to successfully sneak up on, thanks to those stealth scores. Okay. Um, so, uh, Micah was the first to fire. Oh, we'll, we'll go in order. It doesn't matter, because you both get a surprise round anyway. So, who are you targeting? Uh, or what are you doing? You get a surprise uh. round. Well, I guess, okay, so surprise round. So even if I run into the middle here, that's not like giving us away or anything, like. It, it will say that that would happen simultaneously with him firing off his shots. So you could do that without, without, okay. without blowing his cup. <laughs> and when when these stalls are like, is there any like cover within a stall? Uh, uh, no doorway or anything. It's just all open stall. There's like Behind very. Doors. There's like a thin like bar, like a like a gate almost. Okay. It's, you can't see it there. And then they're solid between them. Uh, but yeah, there's like it wouldn't really be cover. Like this is cover, but there's no cover okay. in, in the entrance to this. Got it. Got it. And then how many feet from this end of the thing to the other end? From the uh, yes. Like about Towards sixty way. feet from end to end on the stalls. Okay. Uh, What's your range? I will. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot at the fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna go 30 feet in, okay. hugging the south wall. Um, five, 25. And then as I get to the center of the room, can I see into the stable there? Give me a perception check. Okay. <clears throat> That's a natural one. Wow. Oh. You know someone's in there because you've heard noise, but you can't get a good look. He is behind a horse. There's a horse in that stall and he's sort of rummaging behind that horse that's there. Cool. All right, so then I guess I'm just going to, how far is that second goblin, sorry? It's okay. He is 50 feet. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna throw a javelin at that first goblin. Okay. First keeping watch. Great, make your attack roll. Wow, just killing people, huh? Yeah, 15 to hit. That will hit. Okay. Max roll, so 10 piercing damage. 10 piercing damage, great. Ooh. All right, that's attack number one, javelin number one, attack number two right. to that goblin. Whoa. Nat 20. Oh, oh this guy is done for. Yeah, okay. Oh, and I rolled critical, so from Impaled piercer, I get to roll more dice. What? I'm doubling that die, so that's 10 plus <laughs> four, 14 plus, let me do it, let me do it. <laughs> Go for it, sure. Do it. Um, oh and then one God. additional of these. Oh, oh no! So that's 20 damage. Oh, 20 God. damage. That second one sails Ooh. through the air, and even though that barrier is very thin between the stalls, it goes through him and <laughs> pins him up against the side there, and he dies right off the bat. Aww. So with that, um, he's going to then, uh, Micah peeks out from behind like, the pillar there. <laughs> what the fuck? And he was, yeah, he was tar He was sort of lining up a shot there, but he, he's gonna pivot and he's gonna target um, <clears throat> this one back here. Okay. And with the sharpshooter feet, Ooh, he's gonna be able to oh boy. <laughs> fire us off. Okay. Um, that is a 14 to hit, that will hit. Oh. Did he take the minus five to the? Uh, he did not. Oh. Uh, I want to make sure that he hit. Okay, nine damage there. And with the, uh, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. I think I am. Uh, when you use the attack, to, you can use a bonus action to attack with a hand crossbow you're holding. He has the crossbow <gasps> expert feet as well. So he. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god! Fuck my hero! <laughs> Nineteen makes it a twenty-four. That hits. Um, that's another eight damage. Oh my god. And that is, I think that's, double check. Eight and nine? Yeah. Wow. 
That's quite the killer move, you two. Uh, <laughs> that is enough. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that one goes down. Okay. <laughs> the guy's probably never going to need to note it. Not even going <laughs> to notice. Well, the Doxley's first attack didn't kill it, oh, so he okay. did go like, Glock! Oh, you know what I mean? So they both died. <laughs> oh, Glock Glick, you're on the Glock Glick! Quit saying your own name. All okay, the time. we're back to the top of the round here. Okay. That was a surprise round. Um, wow. I'm. How far am I from the human now? Uh, you are 45 feet ish. Uh, he does have partial cover behind that horse there. Okay, and how has he like turned around at all? Like yeah, so he was rummaging, and you see, after the sound of the goblins, he like poked his head up. You could see it like just over the horse, like he's trying to locate the source of the noise or whatever is happening. Uh, okay, and do I recognize him at all? You don't. No. Nope. Okay, I'm going to not draw more javelins. I'm just going to charge him. So okay. I'll dash. There's thirty, and you're going to dash in there. Yeah. Great. Uh, give me a perception check now that you're, you can give it with advantage now that you're sort of in the stall here. Okay. <laughs> That's another nat one. <gasps> no. Okay. You can't really, uh, uh, really up and down. You can't you really know. see, you know, what he was digging at necessarily, uh, but it, you do see like a mess of straw. Like it seems like he was tearing this stall apart trying to find something in here. Okay. And he was not able to locate it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to try to like keep him, keep him in my sight, not okay. let him out. And it is going to be Micah. He's going to go 35 feet. And then he's going to, uh, uh, he's, he's gonna bonus action dash with his cunning action there. Okay. <laughs> and then he's going to, he's gonna fire Damn. over your shoulder there. Uh, that will hit. Okay. Uh, that is 11 damage. Oh! Uh, okay, that's his turn. Okay. Now it is finally the human man's turn. To shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> he, he sort of gets hit with the bolt there. Oh, fuck! And he looks back, he sees, so he looks, sees you and there's sort of a look of confusion, but he looks over your shoulder and he sees Micah and you can tell there's a look of recognition of some kind. Like he knows who Micah <clears throat> is and he's gonna try to, oh, he's gonna try and push by you. Give me an athletics check. Okay. As he tries to shove you aside. 21. Oh my God. 16. <gasps> but he still managed to sort of, he tries to push and you <clears throat> shove him back into the corner there and the horse <clears throat> sort of pushes and he sort of kicks around a little bit. He is unable to push past you. So in desperation, he takes out a little short sword. <clears throat> He's gonna take two swipes. Oh. All right. Now you don't. Uh, natural one and a 15 to hit. That hits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, five slashing damage. Okay. Just with a wild swing, just happens to cut you there on the way by. Yeah, I'm fine. Sort of a reckless kind of swing. Okay. Um, he does look like after doing that, he, he can't because it's just, you've already sort of boxed him in. But he's not looking to like duel to the death. He sliced you, and he's kind of looking for an opening to maybe try and get by you. Get to this turn because you already rebuffed him. Uh huh. Top of the order. All right, uh, wow. Doxley just with her stone cold fisties is just gonna poof, poof, and try to get just two unarmed strikes in. Sure. Okay, wow. let's see. Uh, Non-lethal. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see that thing. Man, uh, 21 to hit. Uh, that will hit. All right, yep. so three bludgeoning. Three bludgeoning, excellent. So she hits him first, clocks him right in the nose with a right, and then goes <laughs> across the side with the left. Eight. No, it's gonna miss. Okay. okay. So he oh, gets hit by that one and then whoosh, ducks out of the way of the second punch. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, we, we've had a rest since the fight with the Goblin Raiders, right? Not, not no. you. You fucked around too long. I, I don't think anybody around. rested after that. You fucked around. I did. I, I rested oh. at the Anderized. hotel, but you were. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. I didn't know yeah, if, like, <laughs> throwing cute little ping pong balls oh, was my. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. I, I don't have yeah. an action surge. <laughs> nice so I, I guess Madonna. that's. Uh, shut up. I guess that's my turn. And okay. that's it. Great, so as uh, you end your turn there, you hear behind you like footsteps across the mm -hmm. you know floor of the of the stable here, just a slow kind of forward, and each time, oh. he's gonna fire two shots wow. as he's oh, no. kind of walking Take forward no here. Take prisoners, bro. <laughs> I don't even wanna oh, talk to him. Message right now. Uh, ooh, that's close. Holy shit. That hits. Aww. It just hits I, that one, and I then the second one that definitely hits. Oh, dear. oh boy. Um, okay. Does he get sneak attack? Because this guy's full 
Uh, he does indeed get sneak attack. He's fucked. Oh, yeah. oh, he's and fucked. funny he's you should dead. mention him being fucked, because he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the second shot there, fires, and the guy was just trying to wildly swing his sword again to kind of push you out of the way. Ah! And he falls kind of into the hay there that's sort of tussled about, and the horse is kicking a little bit. Give me an animal handling oh, check. Fuck, I guess. Uh, no, uh, that's a two. Two? You just get clipped by a rogue hoof kind of getting thrown around. You just okay. take uh, two bludgeoning damage. Okay. It's not like a full on kick, but the horse is just, you know, agitated from some of the, uh, what's going on here. So the guy falls <laughs> into the kind of bundle of hay there. Toxie, I'll turn to Micah. Walks up looks at the man. He grabs the man's arm and he pulls the sleeve down. And there's a tattoo on his arm that's kind of a like a long like back and forth kind of snake. It's not like a full snake, but it's like a snaking symbol okay. kind of up and down the arm. And he looks at that. Horton boy. Let's the arm drop. After that, he motions to you and he walks like two stalls down oh. and he moves past the horse. <laughs> and as he pushes some of the hay aside, in the floor, there's like a wooden hatch of some kind with a lock on it, secret. And he, well, he's like kind of pulled like a kind of a rug aside to reveal that. And then he opens it up, opens the hatch up. And inside are sacks of gold, like dozens of them. Like all these sort of coin purses, pouches. Takes out a couple of them. For Gujak. <laughs> we move it around. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> I'll tell Izzy. He's like reloading his crossbow, putting it on his belt as he's walking away. <sighs> so Good shooting, Micah. Doesn't respond. Do you want me to get rid of the bodies? <laughs> Wait, we'll get them. Okay. He disappears. He leaves you kind of <laughs> in the stables here. Uh, can I? Pull bodies on the ground. Go Steal to... all the gold. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm he a... did lock, close it up uh, after. Yeah, oh, but... yeah, that was trusting. Uh, I'll... I mean, you know where it is, but yeah. he yeah. did close it up after. I'll. Uh, can I go to the Boyd guy, the tattooed man, and mm -hmm. just kind of figure out if he has anything on him? I mean, oh, okay. he does not have anything on him. I mean, he had a simple set of leather armor, short sword. I mean, he... okay. He, he was obviously not anticipating a fight. Like the guy came in with, you know. Okay. He has like a sort of black cloak that he was clearly using to obscure himself as he was wandering through. All right, I'll, I'll kind of like, are there any empty stalls at all? Um, uh, not at this time of night. They're all, they're all full. Okay, Doxley's just gonna kind of put the bodies like together. Mm -hmm. Just like, and Like kind of piled up a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, like as, as everything's kind of settled, uh, she'll just like bow her head for a second. Into the wild with care, I guess. I'll turn and I'll leave. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> hey, when you got money, people Oh yeah, get my javelins too, sorry. You can, indeed. Oh, grab your javelins. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna pivot over to an evening stroll across the river and toward the Merc Hall. And given that it's kind of open to the elements, the backyard of the Merc Hall might have had, you know, maybe some overturned training dummies, some archery targets, mm. but the main mess hall area that you've most spent most of your time in here, that's encompassed fully in solid stone walls. So once you're inside, it seems like any other day, you wouldn't even know that a storm necessarily rolled through it today, sort of all sort of contained in this little stone area. There's a little bit of a crowd in here. Some of the mercenaries are people that sort of work for hire on commission, sort of enjoying a bite to eat at the end of the day. You see a couple of people still talking about the storm. I was caught out there. This was crazy, the storm. Like people just have catching up sort of at the end of the day, waiting for the day to wind down. 
there's a bit of a split atmosphere in here too. Some tables are laughing, conversing, you know, enjoying a bite to eat. And then there's others that are closer to the back countertop, like the cage where, uh, where Daphne usually is, that are a little more subdued, almost like somber, like people sort of <clears throat> sitting around very quietly, very little conversation. So some people enjoying having a meal and then some people sitting very quietly and still. The people that are sort of somber and still, that includes Daphne. She's not sitting with them, but she's pacing slowly back and forth in the cage. You see her sort of, she's sort of touching those bracers that you've seen, the Saywall bracers that have those colors on them. She's pacing back and forth. And every once in a while, she'll look over and her sort of uh, assistant there, Jalen, who you've briefly met before, is like recording logs or something into a book that he has in front of him. This is a total 180 from the frantic energy of her departure when you tried yeah. to speak with her this morning. She was like in a hurry and now she's very slowly kind of thinking, plodding back and forth. And you wonder that uh, sort of if you had a conversation, if she'd be preoccupied because she does seem very kind of deep and lost in thought, but at the very least, she doesn't seem to be in the process of running out the door like she was before. So mm -hmm. that's a kind of weird atmosphere that you pick up on when you enter here. Yeah, I'll head towards the cage. Right, you start area. to head in that direction. As Jalen's sort of recording, he sees you coming and sort of gives Daphne a nudge. Hey. Sorry to cut you short this morning. Oh, that's completely fine. How did it go? It's fine. You look a little run down. It you out in the wilds when the wind came? Uh, yes, we were. I, I'm sure you've had a long day too, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, we ran into the goblin raiders um, on our way back towards town. And I don't know if the payout has increased since I got this little piece of paper, but it might be worth increasing it. We already did. <laughs> What's it at now? <laughs> that goblin that you saw us take in the other day, the one from the camp that's on the contract, a couple of his buddies broke in last night. They tried to free him. They killed one of my guards. They were knee deep trying to tunnel him out when the next shift came in, managed to call for backup. So we've still got the prisoner, I guess, is good news. If you like silver linings. But you won't be seeing anybody throwing any parties around here. The contract that's out is a joint one. So I was heading over to Clinkertown this morning to see if they might increase the reward with us. Also, since Clinkertown's closer, I thought it would be nice if they could maybe post some scouts, you know, watch for comings and goings. But, as always, getting the Clinkers to give a shit about anything other than their own is a tall order. Mm -hmm. Does the goblin you have um, see, seem to possess special abilities? What? Does he have magic? <clears throat> Doing spells, glowing tummy, moving things around? No. Well, the one we saw did, so. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Took a beating, all of us. Just might increase that from a three person job. Well, we got it up to 800. Damn. But now I'm thinking that might not be enough. Anyway, that's what I was dealing with when you came by. That makes sense. Um, I'm sorry about your guard. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and thank you for your help with that list for Maeve. Things are going really well over there, so I appreciate it. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, try and see if I can also help out with the goblin problem. Well, somebody's gonna have to take charge. Turn into a fucking mess. Yeah. All this effort we came into trying to Negotiate a fucking treaty with Hancock. Mounted to fucking nothing. Yeah, I mean, obviously that the, the anti-treaty goblins have found themselves a real leader in this magical guy. I don't know. 
If they don't all abide by the truce, then the truce is fucking worthless. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about sharing this information with, with Mr. Honk as well, just in case he isn't aware of what he's up against. The magic, you mean? Yeah, do you think that's an okay reason to go walking into Goblin Town? I wouldn't tell that idiot a fucking thing. Oh. Right. Well, looks like everything here is okay after the wind, so. Yeah, more or less. Sorry, I'm in such a foul fucking mood. Same here. But I'll talk to you later. Get some rest. Gonna leave. What'd you come this morning about? Hmm. <laughs> How close is Jalen? Like, like a pace of like no, like oh. six, seven feet off to her left. I mean, oh. behind the cage. Someone followed me to town. Who I feel their safety is now in my hands and they won't leave without me, and I'm not going. So you came here to put a contract on someone? <laughs> <laughs> My mother has said that if I don't leave with her tomorrow morning, she's not leaving. And worst case scenario, if we get to that, I have no clue how I'm gonna get her to go, but you are one person from back home. Maybe I bring you, you talk to her, you convince her to go. You can scare her if you want. I don't care. We just need to get her out of here. I haven't thought of a plan or anything yet, though, so. Uh, <laughs> don't come running in with axes or anything. You know your mom never fucking liked me. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. You can really freak her out. I don't have a plan. My parents thought I was a brat and a fuck up. They looked for any excuse to get me out of the house, which is the only reason they agreed to pay for the training at Saywall Monastic, where we met. I don't know what it's like to have a mom who wants you home so bad she'd risk life and limb to track you down. Talk to your mom, Kate. Oh, I'm trying. If you can't convince her to go, come back and see me. Thanks. Mm. Yeah. I am grateful. And I'm lucky, I guess. But it was dangerous enough for her to try to come here. And it'll be dangerous enough for her to get back. Every second she spends here, Freaking me out. Hard to tend to your business when you got someone you're looking out for. Especially when there's potentially supernatural fucking wind blowing. <laughs> what was supernatural about the wind? Wind blew in. Half an hour after that statue got brought up. I don't like it. <laughs> I knew they were bringing that up today. I guess I forgot about it with the, you know, the dead guard and all. Shitty fucking day. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I'll let you know if I need you to spook my mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be at Paramount if you need to talk or don't want to be alone or anything. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, Jalen. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't listening. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you the sort of, immediately as you pass sort of underneath the arch, that was sort of protecting from, it's not sort of, the wind's not ripping through, but it's got a little breeze, it's chilly, so you immediately kind of 
especially without your poncho. That yeah, you I know. I was like, mom. by the way, I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Aww. mom. Poncho-less Kate wandering Freezing through. mom. Freezing Kate. Where do you head? Um, I want to go to Maeve's real quick. Okay. Um, and see if... First of all, how's the water wheel doing? It's... You can see from across the river here, it has sort of... You had seen it had fully come off and they dragged it up onto land. So okay. it had been like sort of pulled out of the river. It's no longer partially okay. in the river. But it's been Are people still standing around or? They are not. Quite? No. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we'll yeah. go there in a moment. Um, where else were we headed here? Uh, Ilian and, and Morna, where were you guys headed? Back to the Paramount. Back to the Paramount. I was going to the river. And you were heading to the river. Oh, Anything at the river, river. Um, other than along with your own thoughts? You can you find a spot there. No, I just want to quietly um, very quietly say to Bill and Barb as I give them a good scrub and then dry them there very thoroughly um, and enjoy the crisp cold air. Um, I'm just gonna be like, yes, of course the gods can hear us here. And of course we would have an opportunity and you were foolish to doubt it. And she'll sheath her weapons and she's gonna briefly go to the music box and see if she can find the clinker. And if not, she's gonna go back to the Paramount. Uh, the clinker from the bridge. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. You're heading over. You head over. Out of my business. <laughs> <laughs> you will head over to the music box. Go ahead and give me a perception check as you were kind of roll by there. Um, that's an eleven. It, it, same impression that they're, you're surprised at the lack of clinker. Like you've been here during the nightlife of Broncola before, mm -hmm. and you'll see them around. It's not you know they're not beloved by the folk here, but they, they're they'll not. come around. And there's a shocking lack of anyone of that kind. Like, all hands are apparently on deck at the prison because nobody is kind of milling about in Broncolo. Great, then I am going to head back to the Paramount. Okay, we'll follow Ilian there first. Ilian, as you arrive, the Paramount, as you kind of enter it, is it's unassuming, it's returned to its kind of normalcy. The porch and the foyer have been slept, swept clean, as you saw Clemens was hard at work on that. There's just kind of a soft murmur of conversation is, is coming from the kitchen. There's no line leading into the washroom anymore. It seems that those people kind of come through. And no Kenzo hustling kind of to and from with those heated kettles that he had. Mr. Clemens looks like he's at his desk and he's fixated on a set of blueprints. I think you guys, someone might have spotted these before that it looked like he was working on maybe an expansion for the hotel that was sort of adding something to it. But as he's looking at it, he's got a quill and some ink and he's drawing on it. And it looks like he might be kind of making notes, possibly making notes to reinforce it, having, you know, noting how bad the weather can kind of get here on the <clears throat> having seen some of the destruction outside. It's a credit to the staff here that this place has so quickly become a kind of home away from home. Providing more than just a place to lay your head at night, though it does do that well. And if ever the time does come when you need to seek out a more permanent living arrangement in Broncolo, it'll be bittersweet to hand in your key at the front desk. The sort of the thought of someone else occupying your room somehow disagreeable, despite mm -hmm. you know the, the purpose of the hotel. But, so you come in, and Clemens doesn't immediately notice you. He's you know again making kind of notes on his, on his paper. But excuse me, Clemens. Oh, good evening. Welcome back. Good evening. Uh, has my sister by chance returned? Uh, not yet, no. Awesome. That's that's all I needed to know. Of um, course. Awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Alien <laughs> time. Oh, she's not here? Let's get hammer. <laughs> um, thank you. And I'm going to head over to the kitchen area. Sure. Um, find Kenzo if I can. Yeah, he's, he's sort of washing dishes behind the little counter. There's a you know, cut out window there, and he's washing dishes. Hey, Kenzo. <laughs> It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, I was just wondering if you could help me make a cup of coffee. Yes. Perfect. I he sort of looks around. You can go on right now. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Kenzo. Go on the door. Uh, head back the there. little kitchen area there. Kenzo. I wish we had more of an opportunity to cook more. I, that was a really great time. People getting tired of potatoes. I'm sure as if it's the only thing we should come up with another recipe here soon. Another thing to draw everyone into the kitchen. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> I gotta wash, but help yourself. He nods over to sure, the kind of, there's a sure. kettle over there with hot water. There looks like there's a little container that has a you know metal spoon in it for the sort of coffee. Um while I'm making a cup of coffee, just idle talk of just <sighs> Yeah, maybe tomorrow or something. It's it's funny the time that I cooked with you, seems like everything else I do in town 
loops back to some other bigger thing and it's exhausting. Even when I'm gambling, it's to pay back other people for the stuff that's going on. Um, Ken, but when I was cooking with you, Kenzo, that was all I was really focusing on. It was a really great time. So I hope we get to do that again soon. It's actually something I want to ask you. Oh, please, I'm only ears, Kenzo. With the potatoes. It wasn't just chit chat. I need something. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you had me, Kenzo. <laughs> 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 You're what? training to become a, a joker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, that was all right. I thought you really needed something. You said that everything's part of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Kenzo, <laughs> Kenzo, you're you're great. Um, <laughs> so you don't need anything else. No. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> all right, well, oh if there is ever anything else you need, Kenzo, you know where to find me. All right. The great potato conspiracy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, do I owe you anything for this? All right. I appreciate your company, Kenzo. I'll see you later. Night. Hey. And I'll head up to my room. <laughs> Fuck. We'll follow uh, Doxley kind of in the aftermath of uh, Left Alone there. As you exit the stable and kind of come back into um, into the sort of the thoroughfare here, you expect to kind of see Micah maybe, but he seems to have disappeared right back into Narvo CNC. Like as you peek out the door to Narvo CNC also, it doesn't look locked, but it's mostly closed. Like she is very much sort of winding down for the evening. There's a little bit of light on the inside that looks like a lamp's lit, but it doesn't have all of the usual sort of wall oil lamps that are lit, so it's pretty dim on the interior. Okay. Um, just to be sure, Doxley checks that pouch to make sure that there's what seems like a thousand gold in it. It does. I mean, okay. you can sit and count it or you can look. I mean, it's quite hefty. It's, it's... Cool, 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 cool. All right, so Doxley's gonna turn left toward Paramount. Um, as she's passing the alley that has the music box, mm -hmm. can you like hear the music coming out of the building at all? Um, walking without going down the block a little bit, not so much, maybe very faintly. Do you think- Like you can hear some like bustle, you know. Okay, uh, like if you get closer though, like the music really- You can hear it from the outside, yeah. Just not from super far away. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm gonna head back to the Paramount. Okay. As you head into the lobby, you don't see anyone immediately. Good evening. Evening. Um, do you sell bottles of liquor? <laughs> I suppose we could grab something from the kitchen. We usually uh, serve by the glass. Oh, that's not really my style, unfortunately. <laughs> Mark it up however you see fit. Three gold. Beautiful. I will hand over three gold. Oh, fortune. Holy. Yeah, Elliot. Oh my god. You dig that. Where did you go back in? Where is this? Is that Paramount? Paramount. Oh. Okay. I will take the bottle and I will head upstairs to my room. Head upstairs to your room. Does she find Ilian upstairs? Yep. And what have you been sort of sitting there with? With my coffee, trying to stay awake, honestly. Great. So oh. As you open the door, there's kind of a. Ah. This is you. Doc, you made it back. <sighs> What's that? It's coffee. I've been staying up to talk to you, so I'm a little. I'm winded. But well, I'm good. Let's switch to something more fun, brother. Come here. She's gonna start trying to lead him out oh. of the room. Out of the room? Out of the room! <laughs> All right, where are we, are we very far? No, it's okay. not. Okay, trust, just trust me, brother, trust me. Okay, I'm coming, I'm right behind you. I'm leave my coffee, I guess? You can take your Okay, I'll bring the coffee. Again. <laughs> All right. Good lord. Cool. All right, and I'm gonna slowly lead him uh, down past the music box. <laughs> to the water in the hopes that you can hear both the water and the music box. Oh. You can. <laughs> Just taking a look at the map. As you sort of as you sort of head down the riverbank, there's that sort of uh, where that sea is kind of is right between the music box and the, the creek. So you can hear a little bit of the noise, both the music and the crowd. That's it's very similar to the Lucky Heathen. After a stressful day, a lot of people are looking to unwind. Like the music box sounds packed. Like there's yeah. so many voices that you can hear kind of muffled in the distance. 
And you can hear the music. You can sit there. Dox is gonna like kind of dig the bottle into the dirt so it stays upright. Sure. She's gonna start like taking her boots and her socks off. She's gonna plunge her feet <clears throat> into the creek. <sighs> sit and tell me everything. <sighs> everything? What you're willing to tell. So Doc, when I was six, it all started. I just can't. Oh, no, oh, yeah, all right. Geez, all right. All right. Great. Um, no, I, uh, first, what's, thanks for bringing me here, Doc. This is nice. It's as close to home as we can get. Yeah. He'll plop down next to you and also take off his boots and put his feet in the water. It's cold, but nothing, uh, nothing compared to the, uh, dipping your feet in the bay there sometimes at night in the colder months. Doc, a couple days ago you said you were here for you. And I took you out your word, and I still believe that. But you're doing a lot of running around, and uh, what what are you trying to accomplish here? Now that we've had a couple more days. I set you down so you can tell me about all the secrets of our family, and you're asking after me. You haven't even given yourself a moment here. It will get there. I just want to know. All right, that's fair. I am here for me, Elf. Good. And I, I see this as my opportunity to do what we wouldn't have ever been able to achieve in Peran. Great. So, would you say, you don't have to tell me everything. You're more in line with, are you still doing shady business? Just, well, your own shady business, not our family shady business. Or are you doing something completely new? I will utilize every tool that I have in my wheelhouse. And if I don't have to use certain tools, it'll be a glorious day, but something tells me that Brunkalo speaks the Goryeo non language very well. Yeah, I'm afraid it does. For me, but it's great for you. No, I, I, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Okay, Doc, do you, knowing all that info, would you rather hear about the meeting that you left on or everything else that happened today? I want to hear about you, Elle. I don't want to hear about the meeting unless you really want to tell me. Well, we have to, but I don't want to talk about it. It made me upset. <laughs> I'll just say briefly so you can think on it. It was with the warden of Fort Contrition. Big man himself. What? Yeah, and he wants to hire us for a job and we'll get into that later, but it really just reminds me like I'm leaving one shady business to go work for another one and it's kind of pissing me off. Anyways, what I really want to talk about, Doc, is this whole Yarpaya business. All right. And it's... It's really important. I got the feeling earlier when you drug me out of that darkness, you couldn't see anything, could you? I saw black. There were no wisps and thoughts and memories and things. They're just floating by. No. I have reason to believe this Ramo, whether it's Ramo or not, I think it is. He showed me something on purpose. And I don't know if, because I could see those things, if that purpose really does have a meaning within me, or I was just lucky and he was just throwing something at me to get away, I don't know. But Yarpaya, it's, it's this order of paladins that from ages ago, these knights that fought for goodness and fought against tyranny and everything that the world isn't now. And it's like I could, I could almost see and hear the words being spoken out of someone else's mouth and I believe truly that this happened and it's real because it felt so real. And basically, the, Ages passed and these paladins, they would fight against the clerics with their power 
But as the gods swelled over years and years, they decided to go into hiding because that's the only way they could preserve themselves. And there was one line that really stuck with me and it's that the people who swore a new oath to this, they, they just believed that someday someone could rise up and and put things right again. Go against the clerics. I don't know if I'm supposed to assist in finding that person or if I could be that person or you could be that person or, but the fact that it's there, this could, this actually could shift the way the world works. Imagine a world where mom and dad would never have had to do all the things that we knew growing up because of the way that the clerics force things to be. Does that make sense? I'm trying my best to follow. I know, this is a lot. I had all day to think about it. Yeah. So... You think that you are... of this order? I'm not... Uh, well, I... The only reason I think that we could be important here is that Shantara knew of this. This is the whole reason I came to Bronco. She told me, uh, she didn't tell me of Yarpaya, but that I needed to seek it, and I had no idea what that meant. But now I'm getting an idea that this has validity to it. If she knew something, and, and another one of the memories, it felt more personal to this Ramo. He said that there are bloodlines, uh, and he found that within himself and believed that he could awaken this this magic and he's found it easier to get people to follow his cause and to lead. And if that means we have some kind of bloodline connection to some age old paladin shit, <coughs> then we could do something, Doc. All right, you, you keep saying this word, paladins. These knights, I, um, I take out the locket. I don't know if they looked like this or this was an important person, but the fact that it has Yarpaya on it, and this is what they were. This is these armored knights that fought for things that are better than they are now. And Shantara is saying that... She said... The Tyrunes <coughs> are descendants of, <laughs> of this. I don't... She didn't say anything as grand as that. Oh. You well, think I, back I, and she's like, you're a pie. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, she said something. Yeah. She like said a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Shantara, yeah. she had her good times and her bad times. Yes. When she spoke to me of Yarpaya, it was almost like I'd never seen our grandmother that way. She was very with me and she spoke to me about Yarpaya in a very, that's pretty much all she said was go find Yarpaya. And I was like, okay, sure. And the fact that she was so serious about it after knowing who our grandmother is, that's part of the reason I was, I wanted to search this out. But I don't know. I don't know if we are of the bloodline of this, but the fact that I could see that in the darkness, that Shantara knows something, I mean, I believe mom and dad know something about this. Every time that a whisper of Yarpaya would come up at family dinners or anything, they would they would shush her immediately. To be fair though. I know. <laughs> I hear she thinks she gets shushed about other things. I know. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, Grandma! <laughs> I know. I... It, it sounds it actually sounds wild, but the fact that you saw what Ramo did to me and he'll he'll I'll push down my collar and I'm like it still feels, I can feel this burning, this slight burn from where he touched me. Yes. And that, that was real magic. And I mean, we've seen freaking Morna doing whatever today. So magic is here. Yeah, don't but, even get me started on that one. But. So, okay, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to relay everything you just told me. Yes. To see if I have absorbed it all. Go for it. I, I don't know if I did. 
So it's your pile. Yes. Oh my. God. The order of paladins. There's, there's paladins and there's knights that. that think of them. I fight think the magic wielding knights. All right. Um, and they, and they, <laughs> they were trying to fight clerics, and they, they couldn't do it because the gods were too powerful. They could for a while. Okay, so they did it. Yeah, they fought toe to toe with them until, I guess, other magic started lessening and the clerics grew stronger. So this is back when. I guess forever ago, when there was actual magic people. Okay, so what is next for you then, El? This well that has your paya on it? Yeah. I feel like there could be something learned down there. That I called, there's this gnome up at the gnome nook. Oh and yeah, Cobb. Cobb Goblin? Godwin. <laughs> Godwin. 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 Godwin, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. No, he said that <laughs> when someone went down there, there was... <laughs> It was a web of caverns. Okay. So maybe it's some old Yarpaya evidence of like, maybe this is this place underneath Brunk Hollow, there used to be a Yarpaya hideout. I don't know. That's my big hope, but I feel like that would be too easy, but maybe. Okay. There I'm... could be a whispers of something new. I, I, and I know this is probably not good, but I'm hoping I can run into Ramo again. I, the fact that he showed me what, there was so much more. Yeah, he seems possibly like a helpful resource, but also he almost killed you yeah. and everyone else. I wasn't letting him go when he said to let go, so he had his reasons. Oh, so you were, you were being a little shite. I, I, I was, because I didn't know if I could really trust him if he was like, hey, let go and I'll tell you what you want, or it was okay. like, let go and I'll tell you what you want. So, hey, luckily it was the latter, I believe. <laughs> Anyways, oh run those by me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we go to a, we have, go to a well. That's why I don't think he's an enemy. I think, you know, he did some. Sh if this is Romo, he did some shitty things to the Gorionon and us, the Thai runes. And but I think he could be an ally of some sort, mm -hmm. or at least a, a a pot of knowledge where I could leap off of and to, and do greater things. So. <laughs> So you, you don't look to just be good, El. You're hoping to become some sort of magician and and kill clerics and and and. It sound, when you say it like that, it sounds like a fucking fairy tale. I don't mean to sound. I'm uh, not belittling it. I'm just. It sounds impossible, but in a perfect world, I suppose, I could, years down the line, have. A place where people could feel safe outside of Brunk Hollow, where the clerics have no way to touch them, and they can live their life the way they want to, and feel protected, and live with a kindness, and not be like the fucking Gorionon, where you just have to scrape and do everything underhanded to get anywhere in life. You can do it on your own. That would be amazing. You were saying that there's one individual that people are waiting for? I mean, if it was just one, it'd be really hard. I hope maybe there's more, but well, one. There is someone who can do it, El. I'll be damned if it's not you. That leads me to my second thing. Oh, jeez, what? Uh, we share the same blood, obviously. Um. Yeah. Do you have any interest in joining me on this? Find out about doing the right thing, and and if you say no, I won't be hurt, but I'm just saying the possibility is there, sister. You see on Darcy's face that like that never even <laughs> computed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's a lot, and I know you have your own plans and everything, but think about it. And maybe if I unlock some stuff and then you change your mind and you're like, I really want on board, I could be like a teacher and I could show you the ropes. Then you have to decide right now. But it's the possibilities there. So. All right, I'll, I'll think about it. All right, that's honestly a better win than I thought I was gonna get, so that's great. You don't think I'm crazy? The, all this talk? No. No, I don't. I'm honestly just impressed that 
Chantara actually said something that wasn't... Maybe it was like 30% gobbledygook and then 70% right, but the fact that it was right is good. I am impressed. Yeah. That's the only reason why I was mad at <coughs> Yeah. Um... So that was my day. It's a big day, Hill. Yeah. Um... We could talk about it later at the meeting. There, our party's gonna want to talk in the morning. We're supposed to come to a decision of whether we're going to help the warden or not. Morna okay. and TC pretty much are on board already. All right. Are you leaning in a certain way? You don't have to talk about the. We can talk about it yeah. later. But are you leaning in a direction? It just feels bad to work for a crummy organization under the People's Ministry. The prison is literally their direct connection, and I hate to do any favor for them. But there is a gold payout. And you have what? <laughs> well, it's not about Four the gold. gold. <laughs> you got five no, gold? I, uh, that leads me to my third thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow some money? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, I, if I, I probably wouldn't want to do it. Uh, to, probably. <laughs> it just feels like if I did that, I'd just be going right back to Goryeo non-stuff just under a different name for a day or two, and that feels shitty. I don't want to be an undercover fucking poking the bear guy. Well, you're your own personnel. You can do whatever you want. That's why I wanted to bring it to you, because if you saw merit in it, then I would do it. But if you didn't, then I wouldn't really give a fuck. All right, why should I? I don't have, I... The warden is a good person to have that, that we've done a job for if, like, I don't know. I feel like you're just arguing with yourself. I don't <laughs> yeah, have yeah, any, I haven't even one, one way or another. On the <laughs> why don't you, just, like, why don't yeah. you <laughs> sleep on it? Because okay. I sense that you're a little bit at war with yourself. <laughs> okay. And we can talk about it with the group in the morning. Great. See, I didn't get mad. I'm very impressed. Yeah. I love you, sister. And I'm very happy to be on this adventure with you. I love you too, Will. And I hope everything that you're doing, all of your things, amounts to everything you want. And you'll you'll achieve it. And if you need help, and if it's not too shady, I'll help you out. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. Nice brother. Yeah. All right. Back to the Paramount, then? Let's just sit here for a little while. It'll be nice. Cheers. You guys sit, have a little drink, let your feet kind of dangle in the water, close your eyes and it doesn't feel the same, but you think of the bay as you just sort of let the water wash over you. And on the other end of Brunk Hollow in the Lucky Heathen, TC who's been sort of keeping- Winning all eye. night. <laughs> yeah, winning all night. <laughs> well, actually, oh. yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that later, but. <laughs> He finishes up his game. Okay. And he gets up from the table. Okay. It seems sort of based on his reaction that maybe lost some money, didn't win. He sort of walks, gets up a little haughty, sort of <laughs> and gives a couple of people. Someone, someone kind of sticks out a hand to shake and he kind of reluctantly shakes the man's hand. <laughs> gets his jacket. Walks through the crowd. It looks like he's headed I'll, for the exit. I'll try to, like, as he might get a look at me, I'll try to obscure myself. Give me a still check. Some way, okay. Uh, 24. 24. Mm. Immediately as you start to kind of sense him turning, you just turn and focus on the cards. I mean, there's a sea of faces, a sea of heads, a sea of hats. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sort of register at all to your knowledge. And then you kind of, after just a moment, look up and you can see him heading for the exit. I'll finish out my hand. Like, ah. <laughs> I'll take my thousands of gold now that I just won. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little space, but I'm gonna try to tail him. Okay. Heads outside. It's easy at the first, at first he sort of heads outside and you're able to stay on the interior mm -hmm. in the crowd, kind of just looking, keeping an eye. Takes a left. Sort of heading toward you know uh, toward Paramount ish, not okay to Paramount, but uh, in that direction. In that direction, you yeah. could conceivably be heading towards Paramount or either of the camps because uh, the Goblin and the Gnome camps are yep. kind of you'd have to go that direction, mm -hmm. right? All right. Um, 
yeah, keep a distance, but mm-hmm. it's dark at this point. Yeah, yeah. it's dark. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's some people out and about. It's not mm-hmm. super crowded outside. Sort of tucking his jacket. He gets past the Paramount. Mm-hmm. Give a look around. This looks like he's headed for Detention Pass. Okay. Which sort of immediately in your mind possibly eliminates the goblin camp because yeah. you could have gone through the alleys and gone back there, yeah. but it doesn't eliminate the gnome camp because you do go to sort of oh, out right. that way and then loop back around onto the bluffs there. Okay. So he looks like he's heading out the uh, eastern end of town there. Okay. Stay, oh. Staying on him for now. Give me the stealth check because you head out of the main what thoroughfare. What are you doing over there? <laughs> 15. 15, okay. You get out to detention pass, sort of keeping your distance. And at one point, one guy looks like he's uh, bringing a cart. He looks like he was maybe at Fort Contrition. He's coming back into Brunk Hall. He's leading a horse that has mm-hmm. a court cart behind it. So you kind of get behind that and you stay behind it for a little bit just to like let it pass. He's still, I still got eyes on him. He loops around. So it looks like he's headed up to the bluffs there, up onto the stubborn bluffs. Where it could be the gnome camps, yeah. so that's up where, you know. Couple houses. Yep, couple uh, houses up there. gnome yep. camp. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm still still feeling them for now. Great. Again, sort of foot cane. Yep. Do I see any of my friends on the porches or lights in the in my friend's house? Um, your like your party members? No. Oh, oh, friends. no. <laughs> there is. He's not out on the porch. Okay. No. Or you know, <laughs> sorry. Or like candle in the sixth house there. I'm There's sure. candles in windows of the houses. Yeah. It's not so late that most people would be asleep. Also, um, the apiary there, right on the corner, mm-hmm. you can see. I don't think you know his name yet, but Shelby is out mm-hmm. there. He's sort of tending to some things at night. Okay. And now you're kind of up on the bluffs, and he looks like he's sort of walking briskly, um, sort of straight ahead. You would guess that he might be headed for the gnome tents over there. Yeah, all right. It's a little quieter up here, not so full of people, so following a little more difficult, but... uh, Um, Kind of just as he's getting to, as though he's gonna, there's not like a threshold, but as he's getting... We're within shouting distance of both houses and the yeah, and the known so many houses point. here. Yeah, <clears throat> a couple hundred feet of walking along the ridge here. Acton. Ah, oh, <laughs> my savior. It is I. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't see you there. No, <laughs> quite all right. Quite all right. Uh, it was just one other thing. <laughs> You followed me all the way up here to ask me questions. No, no, honestly, I was out for a stroll, but uh, <laughs> now that I've run into you again. It takes a couple more steps towards you, sister. I make no assumptions about where you came from and why you did what you did, but I can't help thinking that were I in your situation, Somebody who even heard a slice of your tail would be worried about what you might do to them. I'm not quite sure I take your meaning, sir. Do I have to worry about you? No, sir. No, certainly do not. You gave me a second chance, man. If I went back out and did a cursory search of the lands between where you and I met and the fort, wouldn't I find a couple of fresh graves? No, sir, you would not. Absolutely not, sir, no. The man and the elf, what happened to them? I told you, we went our separate ways. They did not reattempt their endeavors with you. They did not, sir, no. Why not? I'm not sure I know what you mean. As far as I know, they went back out to the mine. Does it seem like he's telling the truth? Oh, come on. Come on, Anthony. (sighs) 
11. Very tough to tell. I mean, he seems earnest. He seems genuine. Like he's, you know, a little emotional, a little passionate. He seems offended. I, I mean, if, <laughs> sidebar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said they were going to try to turn him in, mm -hmm. but if not, they were going to hang him. I think that's what you and Morna heard, yes. I ask only because the metal that it would take, the skills that it would take. For you to find yourself here unscathed. I thought maybe we could be of use to each other. But if my assumptions are wrong, good luck. Give me a persuasion or deception, depending on, you know, whether TZ's being truthful about being interested in, you know, uh, his services. Mm. Oh my god. Twelve. I don't think I'm interested. I, I've gotten a second chance, I'm gonna take my second chance. Oh. <laughs> Good night, sir. Slowly turn. Thank you, and, and uh, tell the other one thank you, too. Of course. That's off toward the gnomes. Oh. Burn them all! <laughs> oh, down. Oh. As TC oh heads back down. I didn't roll over a 10. Ooh. I didn't roll over a 10, though. I'm so sorry, friend. More than a Thank you. You never quite know. <gasps> what to expect when you go to see Maeve. At any point throughout the day, she could be chewing a customer out, she could be cleaning the aftermath of a volatile concoction, she could be passed out on the floor. None of them would surprise you. Right now, she's outside of her home, and she's sitting atop a large pile of wooden debris. And it looks like she has partially disassembled the water wheel. The impression that you get as you get a look at it is, she. It looks like she's pried sort of portions of the water wheel apart and divided it into two piles, like maybe usable pieces of wood and stuff that got completely obliterated or soaked in the, you know, in the water in the storm. So she seems to have pulled them apart, determined what was useful. And she's now currently sitting atop one of those two piles. She's kind of looking south across the river. And she's sitting very, very still. You think maybe she could have like nodded off upright, like she's that still, except that every once in a while you just see <laughs> a little stream of blue smoke kind of going out the side of her mouth. On the opposite bank, there are three younger people with lanterns and fishing rods in hand. And one of them is reeling in what looks like kind of a fish that was going through the stream. And the other two are, come on, come on, come on, sort of cheering them on a little bit. And perhaps it's the simple joy of it that's kind of captured Maeve's attention. She seems sort of very focused on them. and. When the fish is close enough to kind of get pulled to be netted, one of the fishermen sort of leans down, scoops it up, and they get it in the net, and they go, ah! all sort of get it. Aww. And they notice kind of across the river, they see Maeve sort of watching from atop this pile of debris, and they hold up the fish. <laughs> <laughs> she claps. And then those people kind of go down the bank a little bit, celebrating their catch. I'll walk up and sit down quietly next to her. <clears throat> Did you find your mom? Yep. <laughs> Bat caves? I spoke to that person I mentioned before about the cave. He offered up a more precise estimation of its whereabouts, but it ain't somewhere you want to go alone. In addition to the bats themselves, you're likely wandering through goblin territory. And if that ain't enough, clinkers say there's chules in the lake. Big fucking lobsters with paralytic poison. Seems more like a danger than I'd advise. But if you do go, stock up on your antitoxins. Do you have those? You can get them over at Good as Gold. 
If you kill any of them, hack off some of their tentacles for me. Doesn't do shit for black powder, but I can use them. Always happy to help. You finding any of that reading invigorating your mind? Yes, I've missed studying like that. <laughs> Gonna go do more of it tonight before I rest. Okay. Do I need a map or anything? Don't need a map. Or at least I didn't get one. You head dead south from the midway point of Detention Pass. You're gonna walk a while, and you'll eventually hit a shallow ravine. It runs kind of east-west through the downwheel. Take a left, you follow that. Ravine's gonna go through some rolling hills. Somewhere in there's where the raider camps are located. Keep going through the hills, get on past, and the ravine's gonna peter out. But you'll start to hear little waterfalls, river moving down. You go all the way down river, it'll dump out into a lake, and that's where you should be able to see a little island in the middle. And that's your fucking bat cave. Scrape as much guano as you can into some kind of jar or container. The more you get, the less pressure it puts on us to get it right the first fucking time. I know bats like such special little islands out in the middle of nowhere. They like caves of every kind, I guess. These are some fabulous bats. <laughs> a little island, bottom of a waterfall. It's kind of nice for them. You can stay there if you like. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, but then my mom would find me there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bat shit it is. Um, hopefully I can convince some people. And maybe these bats will also have ringworm and then we can just get a threefer, you know? No good on bison then, huh? I'm just not. If there's one person I don't want finding out about this, if we get it right, it's Bison. I'm trying to avoid any possibility that leads to him getting suspicious about what we're cooking up. I understand. What's the point of the fucking ringworm then? <laughs> I thought that was part of the deception. Doc Sawbones. He makes treatments for ringworm. Sure. I know he's got sulfur. I'm considering telling him my mom has ringworm. That's as far as I've gotten. He'll probably give you some, I just hope it's enough. That's a good point. Yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep thinking on it. Yep, keep thinking. Just... Not your usual chipper fucking self. No, I get a little stressed out when my mom is within 15 to 20 miles of me. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Let me know if you need help with your wheel. I'll be by tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be getting Josie to build me a new one. Back to Paramount. Back to the Paramount. Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, Morna was headed there after her tools. Nice. Yeah. Say timing-wise, as Kate, you're approaching the Paramount, you see Morna approaching it as well. We'll say you see her first because you're coming right. from a little further away, but she heads in through the doors there. Anything you wish to say? Or would you like to just walk in? Hey, girl. <laughs> Get her attention. Ah, hi. You okay? Sorry I said you'd be bad at going undercover. I'd... You also said you didn't trust me. <laughs> I don't. That was the worst thing. I, I don't. I don't think you'd be good at going undercover. I, I also <laughs> don't trust you. But you also sold us out to the Monteros. Hmm? That is not how I remember that happening. All the same, Kate, it doesn't matter. 
You look troubled. Yeah. Tough day. Do you wish to share, even though you do not trust me? Nope. Good night. <laughs> upstairs. Yes. Give me a perception check as you head up the stairs. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh first roll of the night. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> 13. 13. As you turn to head up the stairs, there's a door just up the stairs and off to the left a little bit, and you see it oh. like close just as you're about to sort of head up the stairs. And you think ever so slightly you might have caught a glimpse of your mother's face. Oh, like she maybe geez. heard your voice, like crack the door open, <laughs> and then close the door after sort of I not wanting- know which room she's in, right? This would be the first now time I, do, yeah. okay, yeah, now I do. <laughs> Um, okay, <laughs> seeing that, I am going to take a deep breath, like the deepest breath ever. <laughs> and I'm gonna go right up to her room. <laughs> oh! Everyone in the place. Into her room. Yeah. Oh. Standing there in front of the door. <laughs> door cracks open. Can you see your mother's face? both very weary and a little wary. She's cleaned herself off and she's changed out of the kind of wet clothes. But you can see the room behind her when she opens the door and the only thing that's not packed into her small suitcase is her previous dress that's kind of hanging on a hook on the wall to mm -hmm. sort of dry out, begin that process. You can see that this is the room of someone who wants to be able to vacate at a moment's notice. Like anything she's taken out of the suitcase goes right back in the suitcase with the exception of the soaking dress. You do, however, see that your poncho that you lent her yeah. is spread out on the desk. Every room has kind of a desk. It's sort of spread out on the desk. And next to the poncho, there's a thread and needle sitting nearby. And it looks like she's been patching up some of the small holes that it's sustained throughout the past mm. days with the hiking, the exploring, the fighting. Mm. I don't suppose you've come to tell me what I want to hear. No, but I have some questions for you. Can I come in? Of course. Okay, I'm just gonna slowly walk in. Is there like a chair? Yeah, there's a yeah, chair okay. at the desk, and sit. she sits on the bed. And okay. so. Sit on the chair, kind of pull up in my backpack, and um, grab the doodle. Okay. From the Chewingas, sure. and then I'm not. I don't think I have a piece of paper with a statue on it. There was only one, and yeah. I don't know who has. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab out statue. some paper, and I'm gonna okay. draw it out, and I'm gonna pass both the papers to her. Um, just say, or let me go one at a time, and I'm gonna pass <laughs> the Chewinga drawing first, okay. and be like, "What do you think this is?" Recipe that you're working on, Kate? Like really, <laughs> like like she look look it. at it. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be seeing, Kate. Imagine you were looking up at the sky, and there were clouds, and they look like that. <laughs> and you turn over to me and you say, "Oh, I see it." <laughs> An animal coming to eat at a bowl. Okay. Animal. Bowl. Bowl confirmed. Okay. And then I'm gonna hand um, this <laughs> the the Your image statue. of the statue. Uh, give me a just a uh, give me a sleight of hand check. Oh. So, so your attempt to sort of recreate in on. Oh paper. yeah, because <laughs> how good am I at uh, kind of, illustrating? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're able to give it the broad strokes, but some yeah. level of detail and. Uh -huh. um, uh, nine. <laughs> nine. It's pretty rough. I mean, you're trying to do it. It's, yeah, it's, kind of, it's, it's it doesn't look terrible. It just looks general. Yeah, it's hard to general. capture the details Sorry. of the statue there. So, I don't know, a statue of some kind of figure? Not that I never paid attention in church, but it's there some kind of tradition of, of headless figures? I was studious in my youth, as you were. Not quite so recklessly, I'd like to believe. 
for I sought knowledge that the gods would smile upon, not spit at. There were a few years where I believed I'd find a career in devotional imagery, providing churches and places of worship with works of art, and the history and context behind those works of art. This is news to you. You've never heard your mother yeah, discuss this. what the fuck? Because <laughs> they work, your parents both work in, like, the horsing, yeah. tra- they're just farriers and sailors. Hey. Life took me in other directions. But yes, I know a thing or two about symbolism, sculptures. I, I don't know. Is it somewhere here in town? Yeah. I suppose I'd have to see it for myself. Damn. Would... Is that something you'd be interested in? Interested? No. Are you asking me to? Not only am I personally curious about what this is, but it's been a big deal around here, apparently, um, since before I got here. Really big deal. Big town meetings, lots of people involved in digging it up from where they found it and bringing it to town. And some people think it's nothing. And I'm inclined to think it is something. How are you tied up in all this? I ask a lot of questions. (laughs) How far is it? Um, I, the, not that it's hiding, but I don't know exactly where it is. I'd have to ask the right people. But I, I know people who could take us there. I'd miss my wagon in the morning. We would miss our wagon in the morning. Do you know when the next one is? I understand that they run daily. That's, I'm not comfortable telling you I need you to do this or anything like that, but you have a little bit of that interest left inside of you from when you were my age, you know, maybe this is your only opportunity to do something like this. You never know when you're going to leave Saywall again. Make a persuasion check. Sixteen. Sixteen. And remember, you do still have your uh, Chewinga magic. <gasps> but... but. Oh, do I want to use magic on my mom? <laughs> oh, what was yours? oh, I, I don't. Oh, uh, mm. is it adding to a roll? Yeah, yeah. you can add a d10 to a check. Oh, oh. or roll it. Fuck. Um, hmm. Don't you get three of them? <laughs> but I don't want to use magic on my mom. She's used one of them. Oh, she She'll never know. What? She <laughs> does know. She won't know. That's won't. true. When We're mommy 100% don't know. positive she's not going to know. <laughs> she won't. You are not 100% positive. Yeah, I'm not. Unless mommy doesn't know. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I know it. Can I make you a deal. <gasps> Does that deal involve me coming back home? I look at this statue, and I tell you everything and anything I glean from it. You pass that on to whoever needs to know. The next day we go home. Let's reconvene in the morning. All right. What made you change career paths? I just found another calling. Was it dad? No. 
Your dad liked my studies. Was it grandma? No. Were you scared? Yes. You don't have to be scared for me. But I'm grateful that you are. Kate's gonna go in for a hug. It's gonna be really awkward. And she's gonna smell her mom's hair again. <laughs> you feel her hand on the back? Okay, and then as I, as she's pulling away, you're gonna glance over at the poncho and see that it's it's like a work, work in progress, right? Yeah, yeah, she's like in the middle of patching up some of the holes. Mm -hmm. And like staring at the poncho without looking at her mom, like as quietly as possible. I love you. And then run out and up to her room. Close the door behind you. Head up to your room. And that's where we're gonna end. No! Oh, come on. Never did I think I'd be playing D&D with yeah. a character with mommy, mommy issues. Like, <laughs> never did I think that's where yeah. this was going. Come play D&D. You get to have mommy extra issues. moms. <laughs> moms. More yes. trauma than A good ever. reminder for all the games across all the tables. If you're sick of mommy issues, email me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm tired of this plot line. Happy Matt, uh, can you make my mom leave, yeah. please? Yeah. Guilt driven mothers out there. Matt, make my mom leave. Yeah. Yeah. Mom mom leave. <laughs> please. Mom question. <laughs> mom accident question mark? <laughs> All of a sudden, the rats from one end and Daphne from the other end. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> we delve deep here at Tabletop Notch. Uh, some some overdue Aww. heart to hearts, both between Kate and her mom and the the, the siblings yeah, yeah, Tyrone. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately, unable to glean a little more from. Uh, oh, oh Anthony, yeah. man. I am my own worst killed. enemy That's ever. True. If That's I what? True. I said you're just getting killed. I know. I know. You gotta sage your dice next week. <sighs> yeah, I know. Yeah, actually. Do no, I think you. Have no, to you have to do, you do it have yourself. To do it, yeah. If she can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Fine. If Deers are gonna do it, Wait, <laughs> 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 hey, no. I'm not. He can remove her curse. You can remove yours. Is there some you kind wish of? You to have the curse reversed. Is there some kind You're of soaking I can do? What can I soak these in? Do you stop that it. Word. You just want to say it. that stop. word. That. Just the more a briny salute. Yes, I want a brine or a soak. <laughs> you can pickle them. Stop yeah. that. Pickle, pickle your dice. They're all very green. Ooh, <laughs> maybe there's some validity to that. <laughs> that is where we're gonna pick up next week. Uh, the, the night fast coming to a close. Uh, and as it does, the group thinking about... Uh, thinking no, we about didn't. Betty buys. We all thought we were gonna get to the morning. Uh, yeah, I thought we, we were pretty close, nice, but... never thought that. I did. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I would never. I would never think that. <laughs> is this our first day that's... It's a four episode day. Usually they're about three episodes, right? No, we've had some four episode we have? days. Oh, okay. Had some yeah. had some chonkers. Uh, a good time to remind everyone that next week is not just so, so bad. Bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. time If you got gifted lies. a sub yeah. this week, you'll be able to watch next it. Week. Yeah. You'll if, be able to watch all of them. They're all um, VODs on Twitch now. Yeah. 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 You have a whole Gnarly. week to go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of saltines so you yeah. can really feel like you're you here with us. Yeah. You can eat one saltine for every saltine we eat and become a bloated salty mess. <laughs> um, boy. Uh, speaking of subs, uh, join yes. us next week. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of the doms. Speaking of the bloated, salty. <laughs> <team. laughs> Wrangler, Spider Wrangler gifted a bit. Helljack gifted a bit. Wrangler did a bit. Uh, Helljack another bit. He's my place. Seventh right. Street Streak. Wizard Ranking gave out five community subs. Thank you so much. Oh, Ecab resubscribe. Jay Brownie five hundred bits. Wow. Darkest Winter resubscribed. Three Street Streak. Helljack two hundred and three bits. And then Helljack with one hundred and fifty five bitterines. Hey oh, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Cheers, cheers. cheers guys. Oh my gosh. Um, we love you all. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. And like I said, we'll pick it right back up there. It's a lot of things to mull over. You know, the prison contract. Oh my God. You don't have to, but it's right there. Let's go. Morner resisting every year. She'll be like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll do it. I'll fucking do it. I'll, I'll fucking do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm willing to pay you five. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Give me the fucking keys. She's going to get Slicing oh, everyone's throats <laughs> one by one, yeah. the murdering her way. Oh, oh man. No. Oh, it's gonna be and then uh, also the goblin camp and on 
just beyond the Goblin Camp, the, the Bat Cave. Mm. Bat Island. The bat, bat Island. Yeah. Bat Luxury Island at the <laughs> bottom not, of a waterfall. That's pretty fancy. Do not water. take me to a deep, dark hole with things with toxins in it. I don't <laughs> like those. Places. Oh, you guys are all coming with me to the Bat Cave. Uh, yeah. You got a whole day. I have my Agent. own antitoxin, and y'all have to provide for yourselves. Damn. That's where we're going to pick it up. Have a wonderful week, everybody. We love you all. Join the Discord. Oh, yeah, join yeah, the yeah, Discord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Morgan Bogodogo should be making a beautiful little Thank channel Bogodogo. there. Thank you so much for discussing this particular episode. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we'll see you later. Oh, good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.